and I hate men. Who are we going to call now? Everybody. been a struggle for me and I've suffered with it pretty much my whole life I thought by now at this juncture it would be a thing of the past that have a chemical handle on it but sadly I don't and um, it's a every day it's a fight and it's a struggle it's been hit an apex probably in late December early I don't sound like Adam Dervitz here but uh, it was a very long December <laughs> And a long January. Such scintillating repartee. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, I want to. I want to thank you for going over that for the last half an hour. That was such a, a great explanation, uh, and now we can move forward. <laughs> oh no! Don't do Welcome, that. Welcome everyone. <laughs> Welcome Frank the Tank, A Smith. Thank you for all your kind words. Don't think I didn't see it. Uh, I will go into that. I hate talking about my feelings and myself, but um, I'm going to have to this once. Uh, Isabel, wel welcome to you and your friggin' Orioles. I've been watching a lot of Baltimore crime dramas lately. Uh, Hooper, welcome, sir. Good to see you again. Kylo Sierra Alpha, Little Deadhead 777, who I used to think was Jack Depp. Now I'm not so sure. Uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I need more clues, Little Deadhead, with your insider bullshit. Uh, we've got uh, Kathy Scott, who just started uh, Mayor of Kingstown, Bon, our favorite oh. show, coming back with a season three soon. Oh, I can't wait. A great, I'm sure she's having, I'm sure she's enjoying and good evening, everyone as well. That's awesome show. One of the many roles I wish Depp would have taken the Jeremy Renner role, the gritty crime drama. And I'm going to go into my new favorite show, Snowfall, which I just finished. Um, and I want to welcome, God, Max Nanimous himself, David the Violinist. In 1954, Willie Mays, in an emphatic stroke of Byzantine whimsy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy I've been, crap. I've been stockpiling uh, $12 words for you since uh, the last show. So, 
you use the word <laughs> monolith and Byzantine on the deafening. And I don't know, arpeggiate, which I use, I try to use at least once a week. Oh, musical. Um, That's musical. That's lovely. Yes, yes, yes. We're gonna, Bon, it's great to have you on because um, we're going to be doing a musical segment. I'm going to compare the kids to Pearl Jam. Oh, well, that's great. Punky, punky styles going and for it. And I have it, a yeah. clip from uh, Dennis DeYoung from Styx, the lead singer, who backs up, said a lot of what I say, but he talked about guitarists and the expendability of guitarists in the world today. Wow. And, we, yeah. we we definitely overdosed on intros at the start of this show as well. So yeah, that, I, I, David, guys, David did one too. I, I, would, yes, I wouldn't yeah. have done Marnie if I'd known David was doing one. So tell no, them which I wanted, ones. I wanted okay. both. I'm going to go back and forth okay. between the two. They are both amazing. Um, David, thank you so much for the music. You are a genius. Oh, yeah. That was a pleasure, yeah. And <clears throat> Bon, of course, thank you. The visuals, amazing. I, I could never match. You know, I had nothing oh, to do with that opening. It's you three, teamwork wise. I have nothing <laughs> to do with it. I didn't even form. I do have something to add to it though later on. The Steve Rogers coming out of the shadows, which we used on uh, uh, the uh, Patreon, Patreon, Twenty One Jump Street episode, uh, Mister Hansen and the Miracle at Renner's Pond, which we just put up. That was for Sarah. Is very intimidating because she she kind of smoked me out of melancholy hiding. You're really intimidating. <laughs> Smoked. Great because use. Perfect word there. You know I will rip the hide off of your ass and douse you in lemon juice if I don't hear back from you within a certain amount of time. I got and it's just legal easier to deal with me. Apparently, I broke the uh, the con the the deafening contract language of the contract, and uh, yeah, she had <laughs> human re she had the deafening human resources up my ass, so I had to comply. <laughs> Human resources, brilliant. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have a human resources department at the deafening. Yeah, we've, remember we've Ralph, been written up multiple times. Remember <laughs> remember there was an argument on Stern and Artie said he should call HR and then Ralph's on the phone and, H, and then Ralph, after a minute or two, goes, and what the hell is HR? And it was just like, <laughs> wow, Ralph really never has had a job. Yes. You, know. exactly right. <laughs> you think Depp knows what HR is? Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. I don't know. Oh, now I he does. Now he does. Ever... He probably... When he was selling pens. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny, Sarah. The, the pen company in the early 80s, if they had an HR department. I don't think really HR good. existed in the early 80s. <laughs> uh, Frank the Tank, you'll be happy to know that no matter what I denied and no matter what I was going through, the ice level never stopped. That remained <laughs> consistent. Oh, well, let's you did. <laughs> what would I do with You mentioned ice? that last show. You, you uh, talked about I? your fascination with ice. You wanted, you wanted to roll. You said you had a dream or something where you're in ice and you're rolling around in ice or something, and I was like, God, yes. some things will never change. That's what's so great about the arm. Um, <laughs> okay. Be, I, so... Uh, yes, uh, as I was in the middle, uh, you know, I like to be in the middle of a sentence when we start the show. I think it's funny. That yeah, that's like, it's my favorite. I love even <laughs> when it's about like a serious aspect of your life. You're going to turn into comedy gold. I can't. It's really tough for me to be, uh, you know, uh, stern it. and serious about. So talk about my feelings. But uh, yes, I've been pretty, I think I've been pretty candid. I do suffer from mental illness. It's something I've struggled with si since my late teens. I have horrible days and months and bad. And this was something I could not grapple with on my own. I went to mm -hmm. psychiatrist, psychologist, changed medication. I am now on, does, does it say 150 milligrams of Effexor, um, okay. which I take twice It doesn't, a day. but it, it it did. It did on the last episode. Yes. Okay. It's actually in my description. I was going to change my name, but um, uh, yeah. And your goal is to get off of that stuff, but it has kicked my ass. I'm really soporific, and I sleep and hit the wall at strange times. I apologize to anyone if I seem to be to go dark and I didn't return. I just had my phone turned off all the time. Just as they say, went dark. You know, and yeah. just couldn't. And I put a lot of pressure on myself. If I don't, I'm so bipolar that if I don't text you, I'm either going to write you a manifesto or not text you. <laughs> right. Well, Debbie, I mean, you'll, John, be, you'll sign off on that. 
right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I know at three in the morning, Los Angeles time, I can text you and I'll get a response usually. <laughs> um, but I, but, you know, whatever your, whatever the deal is, I was never offended. I don't think anyone was offended. We just want what's best for you. And you gotta, you gotta handle your business. It's, it's all good. Well, you, you know, we're just said, happy you're back. In your other life, you'd be a great therapist, musical therapist. Oh. <laughs> um, I know. Do you you people stuff suffer from from depression, right? Oh, all the time. Yeah. Okay. Oh, do you know how much man. I've been rejected? <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> and speaking of you people, David, for what you yes. did for us, Max, Max, anonymously, that'll be the first order yeah. before Sarah talks of business. If I were Pete Buttigieg, I would have anal sex with you. Oh, thank oh, you. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> do you do you like how heart warmed I was by that? <laughs> You gotta be. That's the perfect. That's yeah. the perfect couple to me. I think someday you two are destined for each other. Yeah, I'll break them up. <clears throat> you give them your own Department of Transportation, if you know what I mean. Exactly. Up the Hershey yeah. Highway. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Pirates of the Caribbean uh, butt pirate joke in there somewhere. I don't know where. I do have the ability. Yeah. I want to thank every crazy Robin reaching out. And her. she's actually in the mental health profession. Uh, and again, I just uh, I could not. I just cut everything off and not, I mean, out of just, I couldn't deliver what I felt was, was the, uh, uh, the paradigm of me. And I just, um, low self estital, all the, all the, you know, quintessential, all the, you know, the, 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 the bullet points of, of bipolar depression that at, at its lowest. And, uh, I, I still feel horrible. Sarah smoked me out, and we'll see how this goes. I saw I did the uh, the deepening, uh, the Patreon Jump Street episode. I felt okay during that, but I did crash right after it. Yeah. Um, that's for me. That's you know, riding a bike, talking Jump Street. It's not a true test oh, of sure. my mental health. Talking Jump Street, right? <laughs> well, Bon Jovi, uh, what are you doing here? Uh, I, I, gotta, I gotta add John. Well, can I take over your show for a moment, John? Just let me to... just say hi to Ch yes. Chubby Pickle Adams, Black Morticia Adams. Welcome, everyone. Pamela. Oh, P. Caldwell. Pamela Caldwell. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, miss. Uh, Babs the Rush. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone's kind words over time. Don't think I didn't see it. I don't think it didn't help because it does. Without that, I think I'd probably um, have gone the uh, Robin Williams route. Frank the Tank. Sure. Great. Uh, Kylo, thank you, sir. Rick, the electrician, no worries, mate. You were in the juice for a while, thank you, sir. Uh, okay, Bon, I guess we have to add something. Matt P, welcome, um, sir. no, um, well, Marta, you, uh, one, uh, one of your uh, dep heads, Marta D, yes, uh, she introduced me to um, Kid 40, Kid 90, which is uh, I, w I was gonna bring up later because of the Dan Schneider, um quiet on set doc i want to tie it in it's not really a it is depth related i got some but yeah she's a great broad great broad she she uh lost her s-h-i-t when she heard that the deepening was coming back and if you um just play that video there this was her reaction which one Add just to the, the stage. that one mm -hmm. uh I'm so excited! <laughs> You're not gonna believe this. Oh, I boy. was I was scanning Elizabeth Berkeley's Instagram today. Today, <laughs> and I'm yeah. thinking, what has she done? You know, I'm thinking about showgirls, and I'm thinking about her life. I swear to God, I was looking at Elizabeth Berkeley's Instagram today. That is so bizarre. Wow, that's so weird. Thank you, Matt Pay. The most anticipated return since Red Bar, who I love. I think he's the best broadcaster in the business after a full year out and all of the – Sarah actually introduced me to Red Bar. I wouldn't even know who he was. I am madly in love with Red Bar. I he's, could even take those explosion sound effects all day long if I could marry Red Bar. <laughs> I don't give it up that easy, but he's in a class all by himself. <laughs> if I were Lauren Michaels, I would pay him $15 million a year to do Weekend Update. But Will Michaels is an idiot, yeah. right, David? And he doesn't make decisions like yeah. that. He doesn't hire talent. Uh, well, no, I mean he he can't he can't help with the star fucking goals of that company. So you know, it's not going to work um, out. So I mean, I wish you know I, I think 
um, I could wish I could be, and it is in my heart to do so. And maybe someday I'll figure it out because I'm so, uh, I'm so capricious and mercurial and bipolar that I could be more present for everybody all the time. You know, I wish I could in my heart of hearts and I, I would help everyone with their mental illness. I think I'm pretty good at it, but I just, I go dark and I can't control it. I can't control it. And this, this is bad. This is four months we're talking about. This one was bad. I was almost going to uh, check myself into a hospital and I decided against it because it doesn't, the hospital part doesn't do shit. It's yeah. the everything else. It's, it's, it's almost like you're trying to put yourself in some kind of Steve Rogers suspended animation. Like time's going to just wait for you. And the right. one thing about depression and what I go through is time does not wait for you. Like you wake up, that four months is gone. It's not going to, I'm not Steve Rogers where I didn't age and everyone's just going to wait. You, I cannot put a price tag on the time I've lost in this state of mind from the time I've been in my late teens. It, I don't mm. even want to think about it because it will, that will drive me crazy. The time I've lost is, yeah. th there's no getting it back. And there's, I, I mean, it's just the naps in the afternoon, you know, as far as like Radio Gunk goes, I don't know how I'm going to, I have to get my energy, but I'm crashing in the afternoon, like in the evening. So yeah. about 730 Eastern time, I'm hitting a wall and I'm sleeping for three hours, waking up sometimes at 11. And it's well, I mean, with everything. Go ahead, Devin. And, and, and you, and you've, I mean, Jesus Christ, you were, you were putting in all of the effort that is humanly possible into two different podcasts, in addition to a Patreon channel. And I, I mean, I'm not surprised that, I mean, apart from just uh, you, your depression issues, like I, you've been working really hard at at this um, with this community for so long. So we totally understand if you need a break you know we're never offended uh, just to repeat myself we're never offended oh, and thank what's you. Best it's, it's a fun you know? community and right. it is more often than not i'm getting my energy from these people but i just i just law i mean it was just i was sapped of all my vim and vigor and endorphins right. and synapses and i just died inside i think i heard a great uh description or uh, definition was your brain is at war with itself right all the time. And that is could not sum me up any better every decision from opening a cough drop to refilling the ice for the next day is a major and it my brain is at war with itself whether it's something deep or something shallow it's always a war and that's not some humble brag oh i'm so deep and i'm no I'm, no i understand you know yeah. i'm just uh up in my head and uh it is exhausting do, do you know other people who have a similar uh condition to you oh yeah i i'm not okay. i'd love to you know uh, how about this maybe, maybe i'll give you this i'll show you who's got the similar condition to me oh. <laughs> here we go uh first black morticia adams i finished watching jump street last month born in 93 oh my god so it's been off the air for three years when you and you weren't even born yet, and I loved it. I don't understand why Johnny Depp is like I, Black Morticia Adams. You couldn't if, if I had a conversation with Depp, I would debate him on this. I think the show is so strong, and it has its cheesy moments for the time it came out, but it is so strong. The concept at its you get rid of the high school part, you get rid of the you could go, it could be the law and order of undercover shows. It could go for there's nothing you can't do with that concept and with the right thoughtful writers it is and when that show was good it's real good it's an a plus yeah. yes it's got shitty episodes everything else does but i couldn't agree more and uh that show is better than 80 well i'll say 60 percent of the movies depth's done at least at least yeah. um so this is my diagnosis from dr kipper himself <laughs> statements in here are statements of mr depp so they either be a party admission or it's use of and and it's dr dr kipper is it's his evaluation of mr depp to 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 treat him for his as you'll see his addictions so i think this is and it's also accurate that patient is fearful of coming off of opiates but knows what he needs to do yes that re that reflects the conversation i had Okay, and then patient also expressed some emotional trauma, which causes him depression and anxiety. Also true. And if we go to um, 
Kipper 54 of Kipper Exhibit 5. Um, Sarah, Dr. Kipper wants to buy you a negligee for your birthday. Um, I would be so frightened. <laughs> Is it burgundy? Yes. Okay. Is it going to be ripped up and meat wrapped teal, in it? Te teal, like the Charlotte Hornets colors. No, I want burgundy because I want okay. like the real thing. So She's very it's pat Johnny Depp. <laughs> By the way, that's a real story, guys. Cut up meat and wrap. Yes, that happened in Australia. Anyway, go ahead. No, you finished. No, 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 I'm done. I'm good. He bought that for Amber Heard. What I just a necklace or or a teddy or something. Right. Yes, very. These are the medications that patients spoke about his difficult childhood and current mood swings. Yes. What did Mr. Depp tell you about his mood swings? That he that he had evanescent changes uh, in his mood from. Okay, I didn't catch that the first go around, and Sarah actually pitched to me that we go we do the trial again because now I know what I'm doing no. on Streamyard, and we could do it with like ten people, and you know it'd be really oh, right, crying, and right. we could really reenact mm. it. Like now I know what I'm doing on here. Like I really. By the way, I want to make an announcement right now before I forget because I'm going to forget. I am announcing right if my mood strike if I'm there mentally, I am going to be streaming live the Alec Baldwin trial in late July. Oh, and, oh um, fun! Okay. Right? I love the idea. Oh, you guys are welcome. I'm gonna probably have as many people as I can fit to go to daily. You know, ro rotate them in and out as people yeah. feel like doing it. I think it's in late July, early August. Um, okay, out right. of New Mexico. I was I was this oh, close. Oh, that's going to be a corker. That's going to be an amazing trial. And then it's, he's got such a tie into us. I was this close, this close, to doing um, the Hannah Gutierrez trial from Rust, and I couldn't get it together. I was too up mm -hmm. on my balls of my ass. I couldn't do it. Right. But I was think I was every day. I was grappling with doing it, and I'm like, I just don't have the stuff for it. I just don't. No, uh, I was close to doing. I was very close. I watched every minute of that trial, by the way. Um, and I just was I, every day. I'm like, why don't I just jump on with the Gutierrez stuff? I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I had so many opinions and thoughts, and I was just. <laughs> I watched every second of it. Every second of it. Thank you, Robert Seventy. Welcome, Fudge Sickle. We're going to be talking about Stuttering John in probably an hour and a half. I know that's why you're here. <laughs> okay. Thank God. Wow. We're gonna talk about uh one too many in about an hour and a half. Right. And we got a commentary on that. Oh. Babe Lewis, welcome, Fudge Cycle. I missed you too. Babe Lewis, Ed Rooney, welcome, sir. Johnny Depp was offered Ferris Bueller after Matthew Broderick, as you know. Uh Matthew Broderick killed two people in Ireland, as you know. Uh <laughs> and <laughs> congratulations, Rick the elect Sarah Cheney. Oh my god, isn't Hooper? Am I right? She sounds exactly like Liz Cheney. You is really it, is do. it Sarah Maines or Natalie or Sarah Cheney? I don't use somewhere in the middle of those two. I can't. Ugh, I don't. Know, I want neither. If I were running, <laughs> I need. Go ahead, Sarah. No, no I, you finish. But I need to get to thanking people because I'm okay, going to lose them okay. in a second. I was just going to say, if I were running DC Animation, I would cast you as Barbara Gordon or at Oracle as back or slash back girl in a second to voice it over. You really are the perfect <laughs> back girl voice. You really are. Go ahead, sir. Thanks. I don't know enough about Batgirl. I know that's um, blasphemy in this community. Barbara Gordon, uh, Jim Gordon, a friend of mine. Good. Um, <laughs> anyway, I need to thank, uh, we have had some donations come in. I need to thank Mr. A. Smith for his continuous generosity from the beginning. Yes. Of course, Ms. Kathy Scott, you are so lovely, and I look forward to having yeah. you on again very soon. Um, we have eight men. <laughs> <laughs> you're such a genius with those drops, Bond. I'm How rusty too. It? I haven't been on the air for months, so I, thank you. Sorry. Oh, that's crazy. That's just, I don't. How do you do it? Go ahead, I sir. also no no problem. Uh, Hooper, as always, also from the beginning, you are wonderful. Um, mm. And Robert, oh gosh, I can bear. I'm so blind. Robert Burrs, if I'm saying that right. Thank you so much yeah. for that tremendous super sticker. Thank yes, you thank so you. so much, everybody. Um, we still have a goal every month. I know this, this part sucks and I hate doing it. The goal is 300. Uh, we have the Patreon going over there. Um, it is patreon.com slash wino forever. We also have, if Arm will remove the chat, we have the same argument we had four months ago. Uh, we have the <laughs> no. cash app. 
Well, I just want to say there? hi to Roxanne. I, Roxanne Weeks. You know, Roxy Weeks is a good friend of mine. Oh, okay. We also I, have, once, I, it, once the chat goes down, I'll, I'll let you finish in just a second. Ahead. We have the QR code. That is for Venmo. Uh, mm -hmm. Cash App and Venmo are always the best. Uh, but anyway, Super Chats are great, too. We love you all. Thank you so much. Um, and the schedule, I want to get to that because that's part of the business, too. This month and maybe next month, we are going to be doing this live show every other Friday. Every other week is going to be a show put up over on Patreon. Hmm. That's is just that, for now. Is, is that an anticipation of my mental health? Yes. Or lack thereof? Oh, that's it's, really, that's really extensive. Um, Roxy Weeks, yeah, Depp's uh, haircut, I saw it. Um, oh, yes. You know me and the long hair. Doesn't work for him. Uh, it, we, ne we haven't seen the top yet. He had a, he had a hat on. So we'll see what the top looks like. Hopefully it's even short. I, I'd, li I'd like it even shorter, but yeah, it's a good start. Thank effing God. I hate his hair never looked worse. What did I say, Sarah? Post right there, yeah. Fairfax. It, it's never <laughs> been worse. Never been worse. I hate him and long hair. It's the, And like I said, left to his own devices in his 20s and never had long hair. It was a new thing. So I, I some people, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work for him. I'm, this is just my opinion. Uh, Roxanne, Roxy Weeks. And I don't, I mean, I think people are divided on it. There's Texaho and a millennial <laughs> immediately. So doesn't ahead. like me. How could a guy I from did. 1912 be a millennial is what I want to know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah. Are you going to finish something? Uh, no, I did have a question for you, though. We're talking about the hair. Did you yes. happen to get the photo I requested uh, from you about from 21 Jump Street? Uh, next time. Okay. She's. I think I, if anyone listened to the Jump Street episode, there's a woman It was sitting in a town <laughs> hall that kind of thing. And they talk about book burning, and she was wearing a gaggle of scarves and a weird. She looks like Depp does now, and you would look at her and go, "Who's this mental patient with the scarves on?" And it's re it's eerily similar to what Depp would wear now. Yeah, the beginning of the scarf. I, I, it was you know, Janice Depp. I swear, and I haven't <laughs> laughed that hard in months. Oh, my Vito oh, that was funny. over here. Thank you, Vito. Oh, nice. <laughs> I've missed Thank that. You, Gungadin, Matt P. Uh, dance papers. Yeah, that was my right. Th 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 thank you, Matt P. Dance papers actually reported on my mental illness. If you open that, uh, maybe that's. I <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Matt P. It wasn't dance papers, and somehow you missed it. I, I only confide in dance papers all my mental illness. <laughs> How we're just painting pictures of your car driving up to his house, you know, <laughs> in advance of it. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Genius says, except arms struggle with mental illnesses. Arms the exception. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Thank you, Black. You know, anyone named Black Morticia Adams, of course, is going to have, <laughs> um, you know, a mental side to her, a mental illness side or a dark side that's going to be. Yeah, dark side. Right? The perfect word. Attracted to the dark side. <laughs> Uh, back to my diagnosis from Dr. Kipper. Good to bad. And did he give any more information that he had evanescent changes uh, in his mood from good to bad? You know that band Evanescence? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought I, you said. I have <laughs> never heard that word used in like a sentence other than the band. So now right. I know what it means. to me the moment he said it, I just go, "Oh, Evanescence." Yeah, that's a that's... great name for a band. I love that, bro. What a it great really is, word. yeah. Man, I never heard that used. Thank you, Doctor Kipper. I, I've only yeah, ever heard it used as a proper noun. Yeah, it's weird. Could you incorporate Evanescence with arpeggiate or um, I, I, Byzantine? <laughs> mm, I'm sure I could no. find some arpeggios <laughs> in the Evanescence music. So. <laughs> That'll be my project. And did he give time. any more information about what a bad mood, what a bad um, mood would be? No, it was implied that that would be depression, sadness. What about anger? Yeah, I'll, I. It's not. That, I don't remember him saying that. Now remember, depression is anger turned inwards in a lot of ways, right? Uh, I'll sign off on that. That's uh, Sopranos, yes. Oh my God, we're gonna. There's someone from. Oh, my, I can't believe you said that. We have a Sopranos little thing with them later on with a broad that. Uh, 
Thank you, Gunga Din. Thank you, Hooper. Again, no explanations needed. But you deserve explanations, my people. You deserve. Maybe I can help someone with my explanations. You know, maybe someone will will also come clean about their mental illness because it's still, you know, we still don't. There's there's a stigma. It's gotten better, but there's still. So I have no problem talking. About, you know, it's all my life. What am I gonna? Do? I can't to to not talk about it as being disingenuous and i feel like a charlatan well and and that's why i asked if you know other people with what you have just because sometimes it's nice to get like verification from someone who isn't you that you know yes the symptoms you're experiencing are part of what you have and you don't feel so isolated you know and then I got, you know, I'm on three different medications. And so I get it checked out and they say, your, your blood pressure is all over the place. Yeah. And I'm thinking there's thoughts about, you know, like that scared the shit out of me. Um, and that spiraled me into, and I had to get that under control. And then I'm thinking like, why Chadwick Boseman and not me? He's got a vibranium mm -hmm. colon and the guy still died of colon. I had a colonoscopy in this time. Uh, thanks right. to Chadwick Boseman. <laughs> I really did. Like Howard, it yeah. gets one every week. I actually, <laughs> by the way, his colonoscopy stuff is absolute bullshit. Do you know what a saga that is just to get one, what you have to go through? There's no right. way you can get that capriciously. It's a whole – you have to take this uh, like – X lax uh, lemonade right. liquid. You have to fast for like four days. There's no way in hell someone's doing that I more mean, than once every five years. If it's tied into his anorexia, I could see him being super Maybe. free yep. about it. I don't know. Yeah. I happen to have a medical problem. <laughs> <laughs> so was it Marta? Was it somebody somebody compared my exit to Artie's exit? And it's eerily similar to <laughs> Artie leaving I, I the last when like when I the last day we did gunk was like mid December or something and that's exactly right. when Artie like never came back or it's something uh, like right around that same time that sort of I'm on yeah. Subutex that's a powerful drug <laughs> <laughs> The well, similarities also, to Artie and Depp are crazy by the way Go ahead. I feel like he cropped up like 4 months after he left the Stern show too I feel like it was sort of a similar timeline to his resurfacing. I, I could be misremembering that, but no, he, yeah, I, he might have stayed away much longer than I did. I, as far as just dropping out of sight, but he loves right. going away and coming back and he hasn't come back yeah. in a while now. Pop um, culture. Peekaboo. Yeah. But that's um, John. Um, that's when I knew. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go. No, that's when I knew something was wrong because I emailed you and said, hey, ha why haven't you guys done the Deppy Awards? Remember? Right, right, right. We already do for that Sarah. You got that. I've been telling you. 27th or 28th of December. Well, I was like, they haven't that, done the Deppies. Would you guys like to work issue. on it with us? Would you guys like to help? Yeah. Because, okay. sure. John, just regale us for some new ideas you've got for the Deppie Awards, for the, for the categories for nominations. This can go for 10 minutes if John <laughs> fires up. He's... Best hairdo. <laughs> uh, Here we go. Best, Here we childhood, go. best childhood friend, Isaac Baruch, Bruce Whitkin, Sal Janko. <laughs> that, that kind of stuff. He can keep going. Yeah. Um. I, uh, let me see. Um. Best black, um, co uh, mm -hmm. co-star. Mm -hmm. Best black female. <laughs> be so, Holly Robinson. Um. Now he's now Sarah, he's rolling. Garcella Beauvoir. And was, I'm not getting into this topic with yeah. you. <laughs> oh that, that's those are some of the categories we're gonna. You know, Continue with to... the with your video, John. Sorry for interrupting there. And, and, and this note also said that he'd been depressed for the past three days. So the first one, primary dopamine imbalance. Um, this in general terms, I don't know. Primary dopamine imbalance, ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, bipolar one. All me. All me. So for every yeah. balance. Depression, secondary to above, insomnia, chronic substance abuse disorder. Now, like, that's the only, that's where we, that's where we're, we're different. Just the substance. Like, his MDMA and, um, 
I, what would you say, Molly or I want, cocaine? We could throw in there. It's just everything. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the what, what's the hillbilly heroin again? Oh, it was um, uh, oxycotton. Yes, yes, yes. That that's his, and mine's ice and Pepsi Max. So it's not <laughs> that <laughs> it's right. You're much better vices. Yeah. <laughs> Chronic substance abuse disorder. Chronic reflux. What's what's chronic reflux? Acid reflux. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. What does that what does that digestion. mean? What is it? Your stomach acid comes up. Oh, I have throat. that. I have that. <laughs> you're just, now you're just trying to match. No, 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 no. I, d- I definitely have horrible stomach problem. Absolutely, Ho- absolutely. I can't keep anything down. With respect to these items. <laughs> respect to these items. Are these an official diagnosis of Mr. Depp? These are my impressions. Yes. Say impression is that considered a diet? Would you consider that a diagnosis? Yes, Miss Myers, that's my diagnostic impression. And that's Ooh. I'm I'm similar to every way except the substance stuff. Hmm. Um, I wish I had. I, I I there are times I wish I had. I could blame the alcohol or blame you know. It's, I wish I could. Do, do you think Depp? Do you think Depp has blamed substances for things that are maybe just like born in him chemically yes. in terms of his mental health? Okay. Yes, I think it's a great way to shirk personal responsibility. Is blame the? Uh, I remember. I remember yelling, Pat O'Brien. Remember the Pat O'Brien stuff with the, um, the the recordings of him back in oh four oh five. Yeah. Do some coke. Um, right. Betsy and everything. It was a dirty old man cheating on his wife that was blaming the alcohol and boy that pissed me off it's not it's never the alcohol's fault it's your fault that's that's g canada welcome sir thank you for all your kind words and reaching out don't think i didn't see it um i said that before um he's a real mensch and they usually are in canada right they seem to be built of uh really really stern stuff up there um seem like a real Vito and Alina Armand on Gunk is like when Artie left. Oh, that may, did you say that, Vito? Did Marta say that? Oh, I'm I'm sure it's multiple. Oh, that's so pompous, but it's not a bad compact because it's, it's, it's astonishingly similar timeline. Emotional regulation is one of the keys to happy introverts. Thank you. Well said, Rick. Um, he has a he has his he has a um, master's in electricity and psychology. <laughs> <laughs> He's like that dentist, comedian, whatever that yes, guy's name is. Yes, why can't you yeah. be both? Right, right. <laughs> Electrician slash psychologist. Arm, you need to eat some gummies. Oh, man, I don't, I don't, marijuana and me don't go well, Hooper. I does not work for me. Um, I, I cannot deal with losing my energy. I'm sleeping enough as it is. Um, too much, too much. There are days where I'm sleeping 14 hours. Oh, wow. And uh, that's the reason why we did it at 3.30, because I'm crashing at in the evening, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, just cra- every day. Thank mm-hmm. you, Joni. Welcome back. Thank you, Joni. Uh, c- c- we can't wait to have you back on and do like a kind of European roundtable with you and Bon Jovial. And we got to I mean, it's really um, international. That's the thing about Depp, right? He's an international right. name. No, Depp Get a penguin the, from Antarctica. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Depp would love the ca- the cast of characters that you have on this show. He would be impressed. I think he would. I think he would. Uh, Brendan, I thank you for your kind words, sir. I um, have. God, you see how many wrestling references he made, Sarah, in the uh, the Patreon. I love every single one. I, he's like my my soulmate. I would, really, talk really Ro- I would talk Cody Rhodes WrestleMania 40 <laughs> with him for five hours. <laughs> um, he, I, what the hell? What is he, 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 he caught a Don Kernoodle reference. I mean, because Sarah's bringing back the word oh, Kernoodle. Here we go. All right, John, can I take over your show for a moment? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because it, 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 what you're about to say is part of it. There's been so much media speculation on the uh, show returning and I thought that uh, some people may not have seen the Patreon episode and some people have been wondering if John and Sarah still have 
that kind of chemistry and now you've said the word <laughs> canoodle. If you just want to play the video, for it, we can just sit oh, no. back for a couple of minutes and look at the events that went down in the last episode and everyone in the chat, I'd like you to tell us as this plays, do John and Sarah still have <laughs> that magical connection? If you want to play that, John. Oh, uh, Okay. H today. What does that stand for? Happy to be here. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're not, I'm not going to get any B. Arthur attitude this time? No, I'm going to be nice to you today. <laughs> Jim, you like the, right? She's truly outrageous. Truly, truly, truly outrageous. Jim is her name. No one else is the same. Jim is her name. Know. We are the misfits. Our songs I, are I need... better. My favorite newbie <laughs> princess, Holly Robinson Pete, is the star of the next episode. I know. I got to put it together. Hey, put this together, Toots. <laughs> mm -hmm. I always talk about the house on every block that you're going, what's going on here with the jet skis and the dirt bikes and 10 cars in the driveway having parties at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday. And you're like, what is this? Every drug dealer's got to live somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And this is kind of one of those houses, although I think it was like a mansion. Okay. Johnny Depp, <laughs> the real Johnny Depp, is obsessed with this baseball hat that is given on set in season one's baseball episode called Low and Away. So somehow he takes the hat from wardrobe and he just keeps it in real life and goes on to wear it in several episodes after the baseball episode. He's not, he's not on the baseball team in the episode Penhall is, but he takes the hat from wardrobe and just just dry humps it for the rest of the show and i think i'm honestly feel like he still has it to this day so so yes. this is jennifer gray and depp in the airport wearing <laughs> this hat who he and i say this and i go to this hat because he I wears this hat being there this entire episode almost <laughs> from jump Street. Mm -hmm. okay i'd really like to uh be caught canoodling with him this is in a back alley you're bringing back canoodle. That is a word. That is a 90s paparazzi word. Somebody, Nobody says that anymore. Somebody has to. At this That's a good internet name, canoodle. Uh -huh. Gotta make it to the border of Canada. <laughs> Sarah rides like the wind. Rides like the wind. And one of the ways that uh, he influenced me was I grew soul patch because of him. Oh, Lord. I really did. <laughs> Floppy oh, disk. No. Look at this. This is 1990. Is that a floppy disk or a hard yeah. disk? Oh, I guess it's a hard disk. What's the difference between a floppy disk and a hard disk? A what it says. A floppy <laughs> disk is bigger and it's floppy. A hard disk is smaller and it's hard. No puns intended at I all. Know. How about you call it a flaccid disk? <laughs> if we I needed sound... a sizzle reel for the deafening, that's it right there. I sound you know like my fear. My fear is, and I don't care if we ever do, but, you know, WATP picks us randomly because somebody sends oh, in for no. a fringe of the week and they edit out all my, uh-huh, okay, <laughs> uh-huh, and just play it on a loop. I, I fear that every time you listen to that podcast and you hear uh, what the, the preview for the next week is, I'm like, please don't hear my voice. Please don't hear my voice. <laughs> uh, what if somebody... What if someone did that and they edited in, uh, just edited it all the times John said, Sarah, Sarah, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> I enjoyed doing that. Do you, guys remember, <laughs> do you guys remember how crazy they were with that word? Like Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman canoodling at Babyland in the East Village. That was like the <laughs> paparazzi word. It was huge in the 90s and early 2000s, and it just stopped. Now I, we I have gaslight. That. Everyone says gaslight over and over again. Holy shit. Gaslight is banned from this podcast. I'm going to have it. And now I wish Canoodle would come back and gaslight would go away. How about that? <laughs> as long as you say it with that Robin Leach voice that you just did. <laughs> canoodling. <and> the... <laughs> Johnny Depp and Kate Moss canoodling at Webster Hall at four <laughs> o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Can I tell my favorite Bird Chrysler story real briefly? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Fudzickle Arm. Uh, we thank you for being so open about your issues. Talking about the stuff always helps others going through the yeah. same thing. I hope that's Definitely. great. But if I could help one person who has an addiction with ice and Pepsi Max <laughs> to just accept it and run with it, that's all I care about. 
Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Bobby Burrs. Bless you. Right, Sarah? Classic Burrs right there? Wow, thank you, sir. <laughs> so generous. Um, more than we deserve, as Sarah would say. Well. <laughs> more than you know. <laughs> would I not? Would I say that? <laughs> yeah, you go. <laughs> we, we appreciate it more than you know. More than you know. That part, <laughs> yes. <laughs> more you know. Uh, so on to David, and this guy is, like I said, if I were Pete Buttigieg, I would have anal sex with you let in me, Indiana. Let me have and my Ohio. way with you. Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> who, John? Who was it that said like? Who in the chat said like? I just always assumed Arm and David were scissoring like off <laughs> mic somewhere. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm sure someone's in there now. That's oh god. Who would say that? I think it was I don't, Brendan? Who, who's your friend who is in the chat sometimes Brendan. like you know Brendan. Brendan I think it was Brendan yeah, yeah. could have been it definitely is something he would do yeah uh thank you Texaho guys like that crave artistic credibility resent their good looks yeah I, I resent mine especially if it causes their <laughs> career to stray into teeny bopper territory well um artist the problem is Texo is he's lost that artistic fastball. And uh, I have a commentary. Hopefully I can remember later on period pieces how really the gist of it is how it's a horrible genre because it doesn't it doesn't uh, teach anything. You can't learn mm -hmm. anything from it. You can't not the history. It's it. You can't relate to it. And it doesn't pass it. You ever hear the term um, pay it forward? Like yeah, we yes. glean something out of a film. I relate to this guy. I blah blah blah. I learned something from. It. There's nothing when he does a period piece. There's nothing you can glean from it as no. an audience member. You can't relate to it. It's very pretentious. <clears throat> it's very European. It doesn't. It doesn't pass along anything that you can grab onto. Do you, Do you think the bad years of his film career are starting to outweigh the good years, or is it about that's, 50 /50? that's something I I David I um, I do that math every day, and it's <laughs> it's getting close. No, he yeah. really does. It's getting close. <laughs> I believe it. It's probably not there yet because <clears throat> right. his problem is a lot of times the movie stinks, but his performance is great. Right. It's stronger than the movie, so you it's a hard equation to go into. Um, he needs to challenge himself again and get out of the get away. I always get away from Burton, get away from Disney, get away. And yeah. he's wishing for a Pirate Six. We'll get, you're gonna have a problem with me. I I also feel like his bad movies, like you you forget that he's even in them. It's not like Dwayne the Rock Johnson where it's like he's in a bad movie and everybody knows it. You know. Yep. Um. So that kind of skews your perception of like how much quality work he's done in his career. <clears throat> yeah, um, I, I, he he's a pretty modest guy, you know, and he's not going to – you'll never hear him go, oh, I was great in the movie, but it sucked. He'll just right, say the right. whole thing sucked. But he has it – He he's not a guy that can, can give advice because he's had it really good from the day he got off, you know, got out of yeah. – from Miramar in the early 80s in 1983. He's – you know, he gets five minutes in L.A. He's getting Nightmare on Elm Street. He gets the Jump Street thing. And it's he's writing his own ticket. He's right. He gets to write his own lines. He has a pick of insane amounts of scripts and options. And he's been able to run the show for quite a while. So he doesn't have right. the struggle that many actors go through for those years. He didn't want to right. do everything was gravy. He didn't even want it. So he can't really. And his presence and was so seminal to the films he's on that he's allowed to be two hours late. They don't give a shit. And you've heard yeah. all the delinquencies and the stuff they put up with. Nobody right. could do that. Nobody could get away with that except him. Yeah. And still get the man, the payday and still have everybody. You can't, you know, so he's, he, he needs to be appreciative of, um, he's walking higher off the ground than anyone else. It's, it's really hard for him to impart advice because no one's going to do what he did in that way. And that's, yeah, it's a compliment, but it's also saying like, you, you didn't go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I, the, you make an interesting point. I, I don't know if there's like an interview with him where, or, or like a panel where someone asked him for like general career advice. I was just thinking about that. Like what career advice would he give when 
his career is so unique and it's based on a charisma that he probably doesn't even know that he's exuding. Like exactly. how could he even speak exactly. to that? You know? Exactly. These are, these are the tangents we go on, like where I, I, I don't, you know, like I, sometimes it's fun to catch yourself in the middle of a <laughs> right. off-road kind of tangent. Um, yeah, he, we're in a cul-de-sac. In, in, in any long form interview Depp will give, you know, even like inside the actor's studio, you know, Lipton's yeah. asking him about, you know, oh, if you're going to give advice to, you know, that's the whole thing is to give advice to these new school students. He right. can't really do that. First of all, you don't have his cheekbones and charisma. So he can't right. give you the, he can't. And then Depp will, Depp, Depp will do this sort of Marlon Brando and Susie and thing where he goes, just tell him, oh, fuck you, just, you know, do whatever you want. You're going to follow your path. You're going to follow. They can't. You can do that. You right. can do that because you have this unearthly charisma and they need you more than the film, more than you need the film. You right. can't impart advice to civilians, to pedestrians, to commoners. They can't follow it. They can't follow. Or you will be on skid row with Sebastian Bach. If <laughs> you do that, you can't, he has, he, he has try to play a humble humility, humble as, as you want. We can't, you can't, those new school students don't have a prayer in coming one hundredth to follow the path he did, although right. be out on the street. Yeah. They have to mm -hmm. capitulate to the man. You don't. They do. Yeah. And, th and they have to be okay with being character actors and not leading men and women. And, you know, I mean, there, there, a lot of those people, most of those people are in for very different kinds of acting careers uh, than Johnny Depp, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, 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 not only, he has two things going for him, but he could do the, the leading man thing without breaking a sweat. And then he gets to play, you know, there was the thing with Depp was it's been said for decades now. He's a character actor trapped in a leading man's body and right. face. So he gets to do both things. Not, there's like four people that can do that. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr. True. might be one of them, but Downey was on the ball, you know, until Favreau pulled him out. You wouldn't know any Downey wouldn't, yeah. you know, if it wasn't for Favreau, honestly. And Depp could have taken the Tony Stark role. Yeah, definitely. That's interesting. Bond is the drop king, Fudsickle. I agree with that. Um, he <laughs> passed Fred Norris by like he was standing still years ago. Well, not even yeah, close. Easily. Not even in one week, he has more um, innovative drops than Fred has in the last fucking 15 years. It's not yeah. even close. <laughs> you shouldn't even take it as a compliment, Bond. Like, he's not even in your stratosphere. Not even close. Back in the <laughs> 80s, transition. To, yeah, thank you for like, Jane, goes, transitioning from TV. It was harder, Joni. I go over the list. She's talking about transitioning from TV right. to film. So there was a list that I compiled back then, and it was George Clooney. Michael J. Fox, Tom Hanks, and Depp. Yeah. That was it for quite a while. Um, and now that line is blurred because TV is better than movies, in my opinion. You, you know what's funny? Um, the I, I always think of this example where, um, and Sarah, you'll probably know the name of the movie, but um, it's a Justine Bateman, Julia Roberts. It was Julia Roberts' oh, first I movie. Um, Satisfaction. Satisfaction. And Justine Bateman saw it as her transition to film. Yeah. To be, and then Julia Roberts turned out to be the big breakout star. So like when it went to video, they changed the billing. So Julia Roberts name was like at the top of the film. And you oh, know. yeah, same with Mystic Pizza. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Gunga so. agrees, Sarah. You'd be a great Barbara Gordon Oracle. He agrees. I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> Tell you. Tell you. Sarah, you are the recording secretary for the deafening. I am. <laughs> These last, are Robert's I, rules. The last three weeks pulling this together, I'm exhausted. Aww. Every Bless day, you, Sarah. sexy profession. <laughs> Every day. Okay, is he up for it? Is he still, are we still doing this? Can I post oh, something? I'm yes. exhausted. <laughs> No, I'm exhausted. Well, ah. well, speaking of the movies, over these months' uh, break, Sarah, have you caught <laughs> up on your Depp bucket list, movie list? Have you seen any of the films that you always claim you haven't seen yet? Let me give you the excuses first. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I am still unpacking boxes. Okay. How many Wait, weeks does that take? Um, <laughs> weeks. 
too many <laughs> two, two okay. households uh, merging together um, all right the, the answer is no everybody who's <laughs> hanging on the edge of the this other it's half none. the other half of the excuse is i have decided to save them for patreon and do watch along mm, okay first time that's watch fair along enough that's a that's a good way to get out of that you did well it's, that's exactly what works. thank you the last minute uh, excuse <laughs> but um it's up to mr arm which ones we're going to watch yeah sarah that's like infinitum nile and scaramunga brothers merging together <laughs> poor baby <laughs> wow <laughs> you know scaramunga brothers depp's brother danny is actually that's his word when they yeah. did it, one of his production companies called scaramunga brothers I, I think uh, that's the publisher of uh, of uh, the brother's book, too. Um, <laughs> you love Danny Depp. Debbie I, I Depp, do. Depp. I know. I'll finish that book someday, a year and a half later. Your dream is to do the musical score for Danny Depp. Uh, adapt when they adapt it, yeah. <laughs> um, John, uh, John knows Texaho, line Depp of the movies. Night. Sorry, Johnny. Go no, Texaho, line of the night for Bon Jovi. She says, Bon, forget that. You're the panty-dropping king. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Very good. Very nice. Go ahead, you got a spectrum between my motherfucking legs. <laughs> John knows these Depp movies so well. Here, John, I'm going to put you to a little test. This oh, is no, from a movie that Depp was in. And I, John, call out what movie this is just from listening to this. Float by the high grass, the African savannah. Body Brasco. The stalking cheetah you moves stealthily it. towards his prey. Wow. You got it. That's lefty That's, watching uh, animal shows. And... Pacino watching yep. TV. Wow, you got that so quick, man. That's so obscure. I don't know if you realize oh, how many I knew times you'd, seen that movie. I knew you'd get it too. And that's such a great scene because they're in the mafia and that's what they do. They hunt people down. Anyway, th wow. I can't. I, I cannot <laughs> convey to you how, like, kind of knowing the book like I know it um, and the movie with today's TV, how that should be a miniseries instead of a movie. All right. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Forget, it. Is, Forget yes. it. They could do so much more with that movie than just the movie with today's tech, with the streaming services. It really, I, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to Joe Pistone. I'm going to figure out a way, yes. there's a way to contact him. And I'm going to say, you need to do this. You need to get, he has so many connections, that guy, the right. real Donnie Brasco that in the, in the industry, I think he could at least pitch it. I just want to yes. see it. And Depp plays lefty. How about that? Because he's he's actually older than Pacino was. Oh, that's Brasco. that's the best idea you've ever had. Thank that, you. You just knocked me out. That's so great. So great. Um. So back to David. So I mean, this guy is magnanimous beyond on the balls of my ass. One of the worst. And I get to to the one time, the one me of six times in the last four months, I felt I cracked a smile as David goes. I get this, guys. And this shows up in my inbox. You talk about Brent. I mean, can I jerk off to this or what? I'm going to try. Hey, John and Sarah. Oh, it's Holly Robinson Pete. How you doing? <laughs> Excuse my appearance. Obviously, it's just a few days before Christmas, and I'm running around here trying to get this house right. Uh, but I wanted to take a second to say to you. Uh, your friend Max wanted me to send you a message to say that um, he knows you guys are big 21 Jump Street fans, which I am too, because that show started that. my whole career. Um, and he wanted me to say to you whether I thought it would be a good, a good idea to do a reboot. And yes, I do. I don't think Johnny would do it. Um, <laughs> because he kind of famously really never really loved the show. Well, in the beginning he did. Um, but some of the other guys might do it. I think we could do a really cool reboot of the show and I think I should play the captain of the police force, Judy Hopps, oh. captain. Uh, anyway, have a really great holiday with your families. Hopefully um, you have a great 2024 and sending you love. Oh I mean my God. How great oh, is that? I'm loving you, David. <laughs> oh, that was so what? cool. Oh. The, the, my favorite that? part of it, my favorite part is that in classic Judy Hoff's uh, style, she doxes me right away. You know, she <laughs> blows my cover immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, my God. That's that's why when I when I got Monique the, the cameo from right. Brent, I, I called myself Bonnie. 
So she says, so Brent goes, your friend Barney. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what David means by that? So on 21 Jump Street, famously, Judy Hoffs ruins her cover in about three hours in every assignment she's on. <laughs> so it's perfect. Yeah, so it's yeah. perfect. It was, per- it was the perfect time. cameo. The perfect cameo. <laughs> did you tell her that that was I, her I, I, our idea? Th- yeah, how did you write have. that up? No, no, um, I can tell you. I think I just said, um, because it was a gift. It was a Christmas gift for you. I was hoping to get it when I did my last Dep tour. I was hoping she would do it before uh, we were going to do that show so I could tag it on at the end. And it came the day after we did that last show. Um, But I said, I think she, because I asked her like what her favorite Johnny Depp story was too. Um, she and probably she didn't... is way more than we know. Well, probably right, and, and she, than... right. Um, let me see. Uh, you know, view. Oh, I got it. Okay, so I asked no, she her. Said they had a little band they fooled around with, and she sang while he played guitar. And did you see the Christmas party, the Twenty One Jump Street Christmas party, which she sang? Yes, okay, I said. Yeah, I, I said it on that yeah. one. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I'm sorry. I can't figure out the app. I, um, a- anyway, so I basically asked her, like, hey, my friends John and Sarah are big fans of 21 Jump Street. And, you know, um, they'd love to hear, like, your favorite Johnny Depp story. And do you think it would be a good idea um, if there was a reboot where you guys were now the captains and there was a whole new crew of people? So that's that's what I asked her. Yeah, I mean, even if De- I-, I think... You have Depp as like a consultant where he drops in every once in a while or they need him, you know, like maybe once a season he comes in as like a some super late. They needed an older person for the undercover assignment, just like the, a season finale. He just right. comes in in a special, you know, he's he's DEA. And I mean, they literally did that in the Jump Street movie. In the movie, with, right. With the biker gang. So I, right. I, it all ties in. I think it's a no-brainer, and it'd be so much better than some of the crap Depp's been doing now. Who want, yeah. Do you want to see that, or do you want to see effing um, John DuBarry? What would you rather see? Are you kidding me? <laughs> of course. Uh, is he is he involved in Beetlejuice 2 at all, or no, is that... that that's, that's a okay. shitty rumor run wild. Every week okay. there's a new Depp rumor where there's a movie he's with, uh, and they, they shoot it down. I'm right. so tired of it. And yeah. there's a pirate's rumor every week. I'm so sick of it. Right, I'm so sick right. of all of it. So Joni um, agreed to sing uh, "Bring Me to Life" by Evanescence next time she comes on. Perfect. Take you up on that. Seriously, I, you do, can. I do too in the car, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Schweppes and effervescence. Effervescence is a great word. Effervescence went the way of Canoodle Hooper, yeah. and we got to bring back effervescence as well. Thank you, uh, Gerard Randall. Jerry Randall, it's a cool name. Hope for a bl- it's a black name. I bet he's a black guy. Gerard <laughs> Randall. I, I, let's hope, right? We we have a pretty decent uh, racial um, mix in our our mix. Very very. Uh, I'm proud of that. Our demographics. Barbara DeRush says I had anxiety and panic attacks since I can remember. Nobody used to talk about stuff like that back in the day. I know. I know. Now I I don't care at all, Babs. Um, I really don't. I could. There's much more embarrassing things than that. Um, I've really, I'm so numb to it all. Uh, I have no problem. X Lex Lemonade says Brendan. That's not anorexia, John. It's cocaine, cigarettes, and coffee after his dog. Oh, he said this is G Canada, our resident uh, Depp contrarian. That's <laughs> cocaine, cigarettes, and coffee. That just like his dog. Terrorizing the Depp word wives, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love to Barbara. Um, so now, now officially, Debbie, because of that, now we have this um, as a drop. I uh, shit, where am I? I'm sorry. Um, I just did this a second ago. Hey, John and Sarah, it's Holly Robinson, Pete. How you doing? So that'll be like an official. Oh, drop. that's nice. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, thank you, Josh Foster. Who am I? Purvis Short over here. Who am I? Terry Teagle over Purvis Short. For anyone who doesn't know, and I'm sure you don't, was a very underrated small forward who played for the Golden State Warriors in the '80s with a kind of a rainbow mid-range jump shot, uh, 20-point score. 
pr- in a very congested small forward 80s where there was so many guys, very hard to make an all-star team, very underrated. He went on to the Houston Rockets after that, then sort of faded away. But he was a 20-point scorer perennial, perennially yeah, with the Golden State Warriors <laughs> when those lineups. Uh, remember Joe Barry Carroll, Larry, Mr. Smith, uh, Mr. Mean Smith, Eric Sleepy Floyd, Terry Teagle, <clears throat> Ben McDonald. I mean, those – the, they made the playoffs in 87 and lost to the Lakers in the first round. Sleepy Floyd had 51, I believe, in that game. Mm. But he's – Purvis Short <laughs> is one of the lost legends of the NBA. That is a great reference. Not good. Great. Whoever just now, whoever goes, huh. I, I Sorry, I laughed out loud. Oh, no. That was, sorry, you're a basketball fan. Do you remember Purvis Short? <laughs> I know he's in your division. He's in the Trailblazers division. You have such obscure references. Even I have no idea what you're talking about. That's my social anxiety where I'm just like, I'll just make a noise to like agree. (laughs) Hey, what do you, that's my role on this show. Okay. Uh Yeah. I mean, we should do a bit where I talk sports to you and you give (laughs) me the general, because like you're such a smart guy that you could give me the placating general responses (laughs) back that you know what I'm talking about. It, yes, that 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 is exactly right. I I understood about two thirds of the words or a third of the words that you just used. So yeah, I can do that in the future. My I went to my senior prom with a Yankee. Uh, uh, oh my god! I cannot believe you just played uh, Ruth McClanahan because. By the way, are you two going to be doing? I got a cameo world? from her too. Yeah. Oh, did you? you did. Yeah, How? No. I'm really. Kidding. Oh, Is that oh, all wow. you Italians know how to do? Scream and hit. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Italians. Did you see that though, David? The the excitement we went to when you said you got a cameo from her. We and then went, I was Whoa. like, "Whoa!" Wait, she was like the first one to die. <laughs> I know she's been dead fifteen years. How's that possible? <laughs> oh God, I didn't even know that. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh, this Scout Finch, welcome Scout Finch. Uh, Ben Benjamin with the ultimate compliment. We have the chemistry of Bobby the Brain Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon. Yeah, I wish. Hey, the that's a funniest compliment. comedy team of all time. I wish. <laughs> oh, Scout Fit, Sarah. Gem is free on YouTube. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. With the, with the G.I. Joe and Transformers. Oh, I gotta get Tubi. <laughs> we can watch the uh, the the fictionalized version of the Depp Herd trial movie on it as yeah. well. Yeah. We did on Patreon, so I'm, I'm I don't have to do it again. Thank God. So yeah. speaking of trials, if you missed the announcement, we're going to be streaming uh, the Alec Baldwin trial in in late July, early uh, August for you gunk, faithful and deafening people. And everyone's, mm-hmm. well, I don't know. What do you guys think? Eight maximum? You can't have that many. Pe- I've seen some of these streams have like eight people on. Don't do that because that you're. It's probably going to mess up with the live stream from the court. If yeah. you have too many people. Thank you, Stig. Great to see you in your Stig 303. Great to see you as well. G. Canada is going to say a word in the props department about Depp taking it. He's right. See, that's it. G. Canada is right. It, him, Depp stealing a hat or anything from the wardrobe <laughs> department. He can't. Um, Sal Janko can't do that, right? <laughs> but Depp can. That's a great comparison. I love that. That's, That's so you true. can't give advice because you can't steal from the production without getting arrested. He can take anything. But did I tell you that um, uh, I was talking to Patrick Hasberg and he told he told me that Depp stole his guitar. On yes, the set I remember Street. you saying that. It was really expensive, like rare guitar, and he still swore Jesus about it. Christ. I cannot wait to have him on. He said Depp uh, just yeah. walked out with his guitar and he just never returned it. Right. Can you can you imagine like Sal Janko stealing the clear pane of glass that he blows his mouth into <laughs> when he gets arrested? <laughs> <sighs> JK status. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, let me just scroll down here. Uh, JK Jeff is the actor equivalent of a guy at work who only owns clothes he got from work and sports jerseys. That's a great comparison, Joni. Yeah. That was me for a while. Nothing but jerseys and stuff I got from work. It's like Gary century. only getting uh, his Adidas tracksuits from the merch. <laughs> Remember that Dennis Miller joke when he goes, got a little Century 21 blazer for the holidays. Huh? <laughs> 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 yes, it's used as celebrity gossip. That's right, Scout Finch. Canoodle doesn't have any other purpose than celebrity gossip. Monique was canoodling with Scott Bayo. 
over at on the Upper East Side. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone has made a scissoring comment about Arm and David. Oh, it's Frank sure. Tank. I went to grab a box of Pop Tarts, and Rosie O'Donnell got the last one. What? <laughs> Jeez. Can you explain where you got that from? I don't have any recollection of saying that. Oh, wow. You said that in 2015, my friend, so I don't blame you for not remembering. Oh, my God. I can't believe What was the episode? Oh, I, I, I'm not as good. I'm not that good, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, no, I just thought maybe it was fresh. Arm was like Matt Damon and Goodwill. Brendan says Arm was like Matt Damon and Goodwill Hunting doing equations, filling entire chalkboards, doing the math to see if that better <laughs> more years <laughs> than that. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I always go back to Goodwill Hunting. It's such a great, there's so many good things. I think the psychology, the um, therapy scenes with he and Robin Williams are some of the best yeah. scenes in all of cinema in terms of mental health scenes. I don't think it's yeah. ever got, like, I think Robin Williams could not have been a better psychologist in that role. I mean, he just, it's an A plus performance. Take it for someone. And I found myself wishing that I would have therapists like Robin yeah, Williams. Yeah, me too. That went on. Me too. Do you have a therapist, it, huh? Um, oh, no, no, but but I've seen many over the years, uh, yeah, but never had a relationship with them the way he did in that movie where it was like uh, respect and all that stuff, you know, you, you, you respected each other and, um, but... Uh, but when I saw it, I was like, oh, that, that's really what it is like or what you would really want it to be like where they challenge you and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Kathy Scott. You you, Go by ahead. the way, speaking of Kathy Scott, you missed that last ch um, thing she put up in chat before the, the Elvis comment, which I, I agree with, Kathy. Her favorite wrestler is Paul Orndorff. Okay, okay. Uh, I like Orndorff. I like Butch Reed better. You um, don't beat, though. You you cannot beat the Orndorff hair. And I <laughs> wish you had that hair because there I are some. You ever see um, you. the mullets? You ever <laughs> see Danny Spivey's mullet? No. It looks like uh, Dwayne Shinsis. Who? You remember Danny Spivey? He he was with Sid Vicious, the tag team. Um, no. In the NWA, are you just you just I you're hated just WWA. NWA. You're crazy. Yes. It was bits better than. Oh, I loved NWA. It's way you, better. Oh man. John. I became a fan of the rap group because of that name. I'm like in the music store. I'm like, what? NWA. It means something else, what? though. No, I know, I know. But I bought the I bought the tape, and I played the shit out of it. I knew every NWA rap song because oh, yeah. of the wrestling. I, I'm like, I couldn't believe someone used that name. I was like, whoa. And I became a fan of NWA, the rap group, because of wrestling. I just <laughs> I couldn't help it. TF You'd be like, today, Thank I know you. you're not really into wrestling other than what I send you, but uh, you would be like one of those guys who just like thinks AEW is like the greatest thing ever right now. I might. I, I just, it's hard <sighs> for me. It's hard Shivers. for me to get back into wrestling now. I I don't I just can't find it. It's you know that you can't go home again kind of thing. I that's I feel like that oh, with wrestling. It's certainly not the attitude era right now, but it's getting there. I mean sorry, let's move on. Kathy Scott okay. thinks Depp will be remembered like Elvis, which is a I pretty agree. apt compa I mean, do you remember you you know who Vincent Gallo is? Yes. He's yeah, this really a really strange actor. Mm. He's an Arizona dream with Depp, and he's a strange actor. He's done like five movies. I don't know how that guy even like survives. Like, I haven't seen him act in anything, and he's probably sixty three now. Um, and he's he's kind of a just he's crazy. He's just an absolute crazy man, and he kind of says what's on his mind and he speak my mind. And um, he said that <laughs> his observation was that Depp and his mom had a real Elvis and his mom vibe. And this is like back in the early 90s he said that. That's pretty prophetic. In yes. an article I read on Depp, it was like, it might have been, I forget, movie line. Or <clears throat> um, okay, where are we here? Let me scroll. Let me get through these comments here. Can't relate to the humanoids. It's a Bobby the Brain Heenan word. Pelel, very nice. Perhaps right a biography about Depp. Uh, <laughs> I was in Oregon. I'd make Sarah macaroni and cheese and rub it on her fucking feet. Not rub it on her feet. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Rub her feet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Arm combined that in his dirty mind. <laughs> yeah, is that what you're into? 
<laughs> Sarah, would you take Speaking a foot up. massage with those little Sasquatch feet? Yeah, don't you have a sound drop that goes along with that? Which, say again? Uh, with feet? Feet? Uh, um, feet? Um, I Somebody am, who was uh, into feet? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, will yeah. rub lotion into his feet. <laughs> wow, I was scrambling. To hey, uh, yes. Bond under pressure. <laughs> As Dan grew more powerful, he became more verbally abusive. <laughs> so that's oh. uh, quiet on the oh, set. Fuck. That, that, oh. was my, that was my cousin in this office. Oh, wow. I will cook him macaroni cousin. and cheese. <laughs> So Dan Schneider, the awful monster carcass job of the hut producer who is abusive in every level, has a foot fetish <clears throat> and they're a creepy ass oh, God. T tween and younger foot fetish compilation videos <sighs> of him he put together that is not comedy on any level. It is just no. straight up pedo creeper oh, no. fucking bullshit. Yeah. Johnny Meyer says she was mean to me on the set of hanging with Mr. Cooper. I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> David, David's agreed to do the sound, the musical score for hang out, the new reboot of hanging with Mr. Cooper. <laughs> I'm the right hire for it. Yeah. Johnny Meyer said that. I, I want to not believe that, Johnny. I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to ignore that shit. I, I, I need, I, I know I asked you about that. Um, I will revisit it at some point. Leave it to Johnny Meyer to make it all about him, right? <laughs> and his, open that window for him to talk about himself. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. There's Monique. We miss you too, Monique. Oh wow. Yes, I gotta I gotta text you oh my, my gosh. Deal. I don't know if you listened to the beginning of the show and my issues, my medication issues and where I stand. I had some ideas I wanna in the future, in the summer, and uh, we would love to have you on the Alec Baldwin watch along and you're more than welcome in every detail and uh, i miss you too and i um i love you i love you i love you Valeria, and i love you monique by the way did you see I, I i forgot to get this video alec baldwin was at the don lemon gay wedding were you invited to that w did you do the? i wish oh my god i so wish don lemon um, got yeah. married in manhattan <laughs> and matt lauer and alec baldwin were at the wedding oh god and they show them on the street waiting to get – they had some kind of like New Orleans kind of motif because he's from New Orleans. Mm. And Matt Lauer and Alec Baldwin just shamelessly showed up and went to the wedding. Uh, what, what year was that, though? The two – last week, Saturday. Oh, God. Matt Lauer being invited to anything is dangerous. Wow. Yeah, it's like <sighs> – yeah, that's unbelievable. There's a paparazzi. There's a paparazzi account on uh, Instagram called Elrod Donez. Oh um, yeah, and it is so he gets everything in New York. His big thing is probably five times a week he just gets Bradley Cooper skulking around Tribeca, just walking. It's like he wants to be on it or whatever. Just and he tries so hard to not be seen that he's seen sunglasses in the hood and Ryan right. Reynolds <laughs> all the time. It's those two every time. It, it, Bradley Cooper, it's that comedy bit of like you're overdoing the fact that you think you're going to be assaulted by the public, so you wear the biggest dark glasses you can. And why does like, he even need to live in New York? Coat. Yeah, I, I, right. Skulking is, for an Oscar. Get out of New yes, yeah. so I know. you do. I, they love to just like be by close. I don't understand in the industry why you need to even live. There. It's such an inefficient way to spend your money. It's like so they can in so in interviews they can say. I still love the city, man. Yes. I've never been, right. been yeah. That's my city. Yeah. The, it's it's a personality people. transplant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kill a Mockingbird, Isabel. Thanks again, Monique. Um, I'm gonna. I have to text you. It's it really. Uh, I need. I, I can't repeat what I just went over. So you're gonna have to listen to the beginning of this with my my issues, my mental health issues. I don't want to mess with the chat. Have a great show break a leg unlike kevin war crying laughing <laughs> i call him war a <laughs> i cannot wait to do that ball one trial i'm really looking forward to it and i'm really looking forward to katie aldana yeah. joining us and judy tanuna oh, welcome katie. sir thank you for all your support i feel so bad with judy tanuna like the, the height of when I, when I really started my downward spiral in the depths of the ocean, Aquaman had just come out. I was supposed to see it. That's how I knew I was bad. I didn't see Aquaman until 
three weeks after it came out. That's yeah. really, really talent. I've never once not seen that stuff at least two days in. That's how I knew right. it. Like three weeks, and like it took me to get it together to see it. Maybe even a month. Might have even been a month. Okay, I've where are we? Type two diabetes and weaved it into a comedic classic. Bond, do you have, Bond? Are you with us the whole time? Are you? What are you gonna do? Well, sorry, Bond? what team? Are you gonna now? stay with us the whole time, or because I want to get to what you would? Um, oh, today. What, okay, okay, good, good. I, yeah, I didn't yeah, wanna, yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. Okay, I'm good. not going anywhere, buddy. I love you. I, I've missed this voice. Sarah, I sent Sarah an email the other week saying, "Does he still have that gorgeous American <laughs> accent?" <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I have a Long Island accent? Oh, no. God. Still? Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I don't hear. I mean, I, maybe on certain words, but uh, I don't know. That's I feel like I've heard worse. That's the amazing thing about you guys is that I can't tell the difference of any of that. Like, I, I don't. Is it possible? Can you guys say that's a, that's a person from Los Angeles? That's a person from Chicago, just straight off the bat. If you probably Chicago, yeah. Chicago, Chicago, yeah, Chicago, you definitely sure. can. Yeah. Chicago, we're gonna, awesome. we're, gonna be, we're gonna be listening to someone from Chicago, Dennis DeYoung from Sticks. You'll hear a Chicago accent. Hey, I'm saying we sour don't cream. have that. Y'all say sour cream, please. I'll make a drop. Go for it. Say sour cream. Sour cream. Oh, sour cream. See, that's 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 a Long Island way to say sour cream. He says Is it sour cream. I love potato chips with sour cream and onion dip. Is it the way he says like, the sour? Is that yes. the way he says it? That you know? He, okay. He hardens the wrong syllable there. But um, he also stands online. So that's I know he's from New York. Oh, so you're saying he's not speaking his, his accent even properly. Is that what you're mm-hmm. saying? Yeah, but I can tell long-form <laughs> conversations, absolutely. What do you, wow. you have? She's in... What, a Gotham yeah, City a, accent, Barbara Gordon? No, Gotham City is New York now. So I, don't <laughs> I don't know what it accent. is. They but, change uh, all the time what Gotham City is. Well, what is Sarah's accent? Because that's what fascinates me, the, the way she talks. That's the that's the fascinating, the most fascinating thing to me. It's, it's so, it sounds so different to yours or David's or anybody's. I have gone on record and said that where David's from in Cleveland, Ohio, they don't have an accent, yeah. and they don't have an accent in Washington State <clears throat> either. I think oh. those two states are devoid of accents. Uh, yeah, the, oh, Ohio. It, it does. Where I'm from in Ohio, it doesn't have um, like the severe Midwestern accent that you would hear in Wisconsin, like like Elaine Bredehoff's accent, um, but. Uh, I, I have kind of nasal A sounds occasionally, so it's it's in there a little bit. But yeah, it's it's just sta- it would be standard American accent, I guess. One of the things I did over my um, downward spiral is I was I had these notions, and sometimes I would I would play on it and look it up. And I had this I was watching these crime shows, these real life crime shows where they would the police would be they have the body cam on and they would show you the whole process and stuff. And every fucking thing I watched came out of either Florida. Or Ohio. So I had this notion. Mm, yeah. I'm just like, I go, what is with Ohio? I go, it seems like it's the, the Florida of the North. And so I look that up and there's like a hundred Reddit threads that say exactly <laughs> that. It wasn't like it's original. I, I thought I was being original. It wasn't. Yeah. Apparently that's a thing. That Ohio is a Florida of the North. It's a weird ass state. And you know it is. It is, yeah. I it's gotten worse since I moved. I moved to California in two thousand seven, and I feel like it was not as bad as it is now. I think a lot of industries have left Ohio and gone to North Carolina or South Carolina. Um, so I think it, it's it, it, Ohio is having a little bit of an existential crisis right now. So, can um, can you have a Byzantine? existential crisis i mean they're they're having they're having an existential crisis around being byzantine so yes uh. how about in 1954 willie mays and an emphatic stroke of byzantine whimsy oh i love the word (laughs) um you know you and chrissy hind 
from the pretenders, Debbie, yes, my right. city was gone. Right. I mean, you just described <laughs> the entire uh, premise of that song in, in modern day. It's still yeah. gone. It's going. It's still going. And I think for different generations, it and maybe this is true of any city, it's like you're used to the way it was when you were born and grew up. So it feels like this is what was baked into the city I grew up in, so it can never change. And when it does, you feel like it's gone forever. So, yeah. Um, so with that, uh, God, I think I want to get to this first because it was my friend Brendan contacted me and I just, I was in, uh, I got the text like, you know, three days later and, um, and he's absolutely right. This is a fascinating interview with a broad named, um, Lola Glaudini, who is an actress from a bunch of stuff. The Soprano, you know, Johnny Meyer in about two seconds is going to have a story from her. Uh, <laughs> <She was losing laughs> <me. laughs> I work with her on Christmas Kiss 2. And uh, she's in a bunch of stuff. Actually, she's in a movie called, called She's in Portland, Sarah. Oh, all right. Tons of little stuff. You'd know oh, her mostly from, and this is a crazy coincidence. She was on The Sopranos. And Isn't everybody? Well, Everybody was on this. This is a great role. And this speaks to what I was saying. It's uh, it's so ironic because she basically plays a female Donnie Brasco on The Sopranos. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And she's very cute back then. She's very really cute. attractive back then. She still looks good. No, old broad, you broads are hanging in there much. Sarah, I'm telling you, 65 is the new 38 in a way. You broads do not age <laughs> like you used to. Right? Am I right? Thanks. That's a big one. I love it. I love it. I love it. When Sarah and I, I start our own better than to expect house. a proper challenge from a woman. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, David. I'm a bit rusty, David. No, no, no. I, you're, you I know. I, I, Sorry, man. I'm, I'm having reentry uh, uh, struggles as well. Yeah, all that. We all are. This is what that's wrong. I should have known better than to expect a proper challenge from a woman. <laughs> oh my god, you're doing drops now. I'm doing drops. You, you, you've evolved, John, during your break. You're getting well, those, very those technicals. Are, those are video drops? By the way, you know, yes, I'm sure you knew this. I, I like stream mod, you can actually do sound yes. drops, which I didn't yes, know. You... This is what I Sarah have... put together. Get this. Look at this. No, thank you. No, thank you. The sperm on the pillows. <laughs> No, thank you. No, thank you. The sperm on the pillows. You gotta unloop it. No, thank you. No, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you got the loop the on. The sperm on the pillows. No, thank you. If there's anything to loop, it's that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, David. David, we, we totally interrupted you. What were no, you, what no, were you I, saying, it's, dude? It's I'm not sorry, worth man. It. It's not worth it. No, oh, but, I, but damn it. I do... I do want a sound drop of when he was on Discord doing those riddles. That That is something I want uh, at the ready at all times of the dubbing. What uh, am well, I? <laughs> <laughs> I have about I have about 15 sound drops I have lined up. I have to upload this weekend. I just I you know when you get into that sound drop OCD, it really is infectious. You start to, you can't even live life without going, this will be a good sound drop, this will be a good sound drop, this will be a good... No matter what yeah. you're watching on TV, really, I mean, Bon Jovi is like living proof that Fred Norris is a one compared to his yeah. ten. Yeah. Because he comes up with... In one week, he over... You know, he does more than... And people think Fred's a... It's such bullshit. He's so... Yeah, he's ridiculous. a fraud. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Pella, Buffalo 66. Yes, right. That's right. Christina Ricci is in that movie. Vincent oh, yeah. Gallo is selling sperm, so, gee, oh, oddly no. enough. God. Among other, it says G. Canner, sexual fantasies on his website. Is that true? I know he also thinks he's a musician. The jo the Meyer, the Johnny Meyering is coming soon. <laughs> classic Johnny, <laughs> classic electric yell, Johnny Meyer. Every episode is about a different how a different celebrity slighted him on set. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad premise, David. <laughs> He should, he is, should yeah. blow up the whole industry, Johnny. Forget about Just burn all the bridges. Just for, just blow up the fourth wall. Why Screw not? it. Honestly. Who cares? It'd be way more interesting than acting, doing a fucking walk-on on Hanging with Mr. Cooper re reboot. Yeah. Uh, yeet. Thank you, sir or ma'am. Much love. Thank you for all you do. Missed you much. Thank you, Yeet. I love is that, that an, name. Is that a Uso reference? WWE? I, I doubt it. it Sorry. 
I don't know. Zoe's a good story behind everyone's nickname on here. And sometime that's a good show to do is what's the what's the genesis of your online nickname? Thank you, G Canada. I don't know your accent at all. I'm surprised by you, Monique and Dennis, all speak like regular Canadians. I'd rather have a Canadian accent than a Long Island accent. Even when I go to Buffalo, some have the heavy accent. Yeah, I mean, Buffalo can sound like effing Wisconsin. Yeah. I was watching that trial about the guy um, who got surrounded by teenagers in that lake in Wisconsin, and he stabbed someone five Oh, yeah. Right. And the accents in there sound like it could be Buffalo. There's Nicolai some kind of circular Volkov. there's some kind of circular thing with like southern Canada going to the Midwest, circling back to Buffalo, where we do there is sort of a similar variation on the same accent. So that that is true. Thank you, Autobot. He confirms it. No, we don't have any accents here in Seattle, Washington. Yeah. I, I really, I really paid attention there's to that. I'd said that 21 Jump Street, if I had to choose a location for it. If you know how we always we we always every right. time we scream about how they won't acknowledge where they are, um, I I would choose Washington State. That's like that that would make the most sense out of all the things when I try to put it together. Shoot, when you when you said that, it, it made me flash back to when I purchased the cameo from Holly Robinson. I wanted to ask her where was the show set. I wanted to ask her what city she thought oh, it was set. Great in. Oh, oh, we have God. so much Wait. to say to her. We have so much to say. I'll, I'll do another really, one. Yeah. Armada just know, toppled you, over. That was the last <laughs> thing he ever wanted to know. He just toppled you, over. You might be able to still reply to her, David. Oh, that I was might. probably months ago, though, she, wasn't it? Yeah. She will it be my Christmas. hall pass for the till the day I die. And I know I'm her hall pass. <laughs> if she went for Jason Priestley, she's gonna go for me. The fucking midget, five five. <laughs> 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 she's she's reaching though when she says that she'll be like the captain and the police squad. Let me put it this way: I'm a better black Lower quarterback. Than, I'm a better black quarterback than Rodney Pete is. Wow. <laughs> I think I am too. So it's fine. Josh Foster says if the Knicks get to the finals, you have to call MSG. No, I'll never call it that, Josh. Anything else? The Mecca is where the Milwaukee Bucks played in the '80s. I'm never calling that place the Mecca. The Mecca of what? Futility of overcharging of Dolan's bullshit, the mecca of nothing. They haven't won a goddamn thing in 50 years. I ain't calling that place the mecca. And the Rangers have well, they have a better regular season record, but I don't know how they could. Isn't it the self aggrandizement of Madison Square Garden is so crazy? Did Rest they change their name for real? They Madison Square no, no, it's like the Nick, they always give themselves nicknames. They can't just, oh, call I see. Okay, it's like a I can differentiate between their accents. Only arms could say New York with a definite. I would say California. California's got a little bit of it. You ever see that Saturday Night Live sketch, The Californians? Yeah. Well, it's it's the, the, the Valley yeah. Girl accent. Yes. Yeah. yes. I used to think it didn't have an accent, but it does. Um, so next, this is Lola Glaudini, who is an actress, and she was a very, very, very small part on the movie Blow. And she does this podcast – and at, she saves it for the end, and she has a story about Depp on the set, kind of an uncharacteristic story about him, just the bipolar side of him, the bad side of him. And people kind of trying to – she said that he just tore a new one on this set of, of, uh, Jeez. of Blow. And I know a lot about Blow and the kind of the movie and everything that went into it and it, it sort of – I'll go into that after we play her. We're going to stop and go, we are, I don't know how we're going to get to after this, but this is paramount to this. And it, uh, Brendan's right. This is really good stuff. And I'm going to play it all the way through. I went, a lot of people um, didn't play the actual footage of it. People just commented on the article. I'm going to show you um, the actual full commentary. And it's long. Um, before I do... You wanted the football clip, Sarah, after that or before this? The f oh, we after. Okay. Um, by the way, what you're playing, is it from owned by a movie studio? No, no. It's just a podcast. You know? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Lola Gordini. Where is she? <laughs> John already owns this podcast. He owns yes, I, I, I bought the rights yeah. last night. <laughs> I was working on this for like four hours last night. Here we go. 
but I can read. Can you tell any like? Okay, I want to give the guy a plug. So it's called the Powerful Truth Podcast, and it's it's pretty funny. I like this guy. Little time he's. You know, you're initially, you're like the person, oh, this, I hate this guy. I like this guy. He's kind of, you know, he riffs well. He's got a good sense of humor. I don't know. I don't know who he is, and maybe I should, but I like this guy. This is a great little segment here. Hollywood sure Babylon, sure Babylonic. Pod. Is that a word, Babylonic? I can, I can tell. I have one really good story I that I would like to tell. Okay, I'd love to hear it. I was like 25. If I want to say mm-hmm. like, you know, it was the, my first studio movie that I, okay. She, she's not 25. So there's a couple times I catch her and I don't know how she, she's about 30. She's not, oh, yeah. so I don't That's know how difference. I know her age. She doesn't. I, she's doing Eliza Schwartz. So it. <laughs> yes. 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 In, in Benji years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So yeah, she's about, she's 29, 30 when the, when blow is shot, she's not 25 did and um okay let me back up i mentor young women now okay. in hollywood no, <laughs> yeah i there's like a a group of women who who there's like a mentorship kind of program that i'm involved in that um sarah hates women like i hate men so sarah i'm gonna have to <laughs> ask you to give the woman give the broad a chance Please. I'm trying. I'm I'm breathing in and breathing out. She's what the kids call a basic bitch. <laughs> 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 because I know how all you broads hate each other, right? I mean, typically no. that is the case, right? Is, is is there like a petrified dinosaur bone on that table, or like what? What is? <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, dude, just, yeah. probably what is. is it? Looks like teeth and a tongue, like an open t- mouth. Somebody with yeah. fangs. On The Sopranos, she plays Agent Deborah. Cicerone and she went undercover with Adriana uh, and Christopher and it was she played a female Donnie Brasco which is really crazy to me that is the first thing I would bring up to him on that set Mm -hmm. of blow I was the female Donnie and I remember watching the Sopranos going this should go on and on never end this assignment right Bon yep Yep, yep, yep. I love it. The undercover it was... agent in every crime drama is that not the ultimate? It should be every crime drama. It should be mandatory. They have an undercover uh, cop in the midst every time. And it's she meets Tony great. Soprano in it, and it's just yes. an epic yes. scene. It's like wow, she's hanging with the devil. It's just so great. She's fantastic in it too. By the way, it, it really helped. Perfect. Like kick it. It was it's such a good subplot, and they never should have ended it. It should have gone on for season after season. Yeah, man. Sort of helping people who are coming up. Okay. And um, and one of the women who I mentor was asking for some advice about something that she was uh, having to make decisions about, and I spoke to my experience and and told her this story to help her make her decision. And basically it was like one of those like, oh, honey, you don't know how how easy you have it because of what we the old days, what we had to fucking put up with three miles in the snow. Yes, exactly. But in Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. So um, and I forgot, like, how many fucked up situations I've been in for so long, you know, in Hollywood. It doesn't really happen as much anymore, at least outwardly. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I was in this movie called Blow that was with uh, oh, yeah. Johnny Depp, yeah, right, yeah, and Blow. Penelope Cruz and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And what character were you in Blow? I'm about to tell you. Okay. Okay. So God. it's a historical movie, and so it um, goes. Sarah, are these Gindaloon broads, they have. <laughs> I, you, I think like you're intimidating in your own way. They can be very intimidating. She's got that thing, like that chip on her. These Gindaloon broads, I'm telling you. You oh know yeah, she's good. She should it. correct him straight away. Yep. Yeah, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. From like right. the '60s, you know, on through, and in the beginning. I don't know why. I know it's like a simpleton insult, but it gets me every time because the alliteration of it. I still am a sucker for fuckface when a woman calls me <laughs> fuckface. It's so it gets me every time. I'm I'm I don't I'm a mark for it. I don't know why. I I still what's, laugh at it. What's the other one that we always laugh at? Um, 
Oh, I, f- I forget. Forget it. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, if you I'll think, think of it, it. The, yeah, I'm sure yeah, you will. Yeah, I'll let you He's like a weed dealer yep. out of Boston. Yeah. And um, in the beginning, he has uh, two friends who are played by um, Max Perlick and Ethan Embry. Yep. Okay. A little bit on that. Max Perlick is from Cleveland, David, which I never would have thought. Oh, another... Because he has, he's a guy really? from Cleveland okay. with a New York accent. It is the strange. <laughs> you, okay, I can't. I don't even know where to start with it. He's been. He's a depth. He's one of these guys. He's on season two's finale of Twenty One Jump Street. He plays a skater kid who blows up toilet bowls. He's in okay. The Brave, the movie Depp directed. He is in Blow. He is in. Uh, I just saw him in um, the. Uh, 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 the god, the damn cowboy show I just watched with, from K- Kentucky with uh, with Timothy Oliphant. Um, just oh, yeah, ju- right, yeah, he's in Justify, and he's just in everything. So, the, the other ca- the other thing she gets wrong the actor's name is Ethan Supley, not Embry, and hmm. she keeps saying his name wrong. <laughs> I think you <laughs> should know the actors who you did the scene with, it's Ethan Supley. He's a right. supple bit of protoplasm on him. <laughs> and he plays Tuna in the movie. I don't know how she... Yeah, but I, it's, a, it's an understandable mistake. She calls him Ethan Embry, Ethan Hawke. It's Ethan Supley. Okay, interesting. You probably know. He's been in a ton of stuff. By the way, you mentioned the guy is in three different depth projects. The first guy at you least, mentioned. At least. At uh, least. Max Burlich. That would be, I would be interested to see like a list of like who has been the most, like a ranking list of who has been the most frequent Depp co star. You know, James how, like, Russo, Paul Bettany. That's, that's, a, great question. that's a great question. That's a great question. Yeah, Helena, you got yes. it, David. There you the, go. That's the Burton actors, be it. definitely. Right. Yeah. Christina Ricci. Mm-hmm. Any of his random buddies in the background? Yes. Yes. Right. True. Okay. Yep. And shout out Max Perlick. Venice boy. Okay. And I play oh Max's gosh. girlfriend. Oh, what? Okay. Not and um, one of my best friends in the whole world to this day, uh, Monet, that's where I met her. Okay. Thank you, Katie Aldana. I miss saying broads as well. And I will continue to say it. Because she played Ethan Embry's girlfriend. Okay. On it. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's supply. It's, she did it again. I can't believe she did scenes with the guy. It's not like he's in the movie. She did s- intimate scenes with him. They were in every scene right. together. There's nothing better than Aldana infiltration. <laughs> what? <laughs> when did I say that? Oh, my God. And it's Hollywood. After so, they got rich, not before, in the movie. This is like while they're starting to make money. Okay. That's yeah. Right. Here's to a new field. And yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first. Okay, what goes on there when you see that? I'm screen recording this, right? And right. so when you're doing it on YouTube, they blast the commercial in the middle of it. Then right. instantly you have. And I was just too lazy to edit it out. That's well, no, blame me. Good. Blame me. I'm the one too cheap to pay for a um, no commercials thing for our YouTube account. I, uh, oh, no, I think I did it on my does. own yeah. thing. Nobody does. Nobody does. Save shooting. The very first day that I'm brought onto this movie and like um, Pee Wee Herman was in it. We oh, became yeah. super friends yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we were all in, in um, Alcapulco for like six weeks. Amazing. Yeah, it was super fun. Alcapulco. So, so everybody remembers Pee Wee Herman, uh, Paul Rubens played Derek for real in the movie. And they kind of altered some of it in real life, what the book is. And I think he's called something else. But yeah, it's uh, he's the drug connection. It's very reminiscent of, uh, mm-hmm. well, I'll, I'll get into that after. Right. And yeah. Ted Demi was the director. And this is like, I don't know, like 2000 or something. Okay. Like a hundred years ago. Yeah. She wasn't born yet. Yeah. And so. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, I, so, no great. Um, I'm going to do that. I show up on set day one. I haven't even met Johnny Depp at this point. And the scene is he's like walking. It's a it's a, a track, right? And the camera's on a track going back and forth. And he's walking, saying a monologue in a we're in a mansion. And um, he's walking, and he's talking. He has this big monologue about how he's going to move this. Sarah, I don't agree with that. 
no depth story can be long enough. <laughs> no, I know. I don't want it to end. I don't like. I'm not looking for. You always want things to end. I want this to be like an hour and a, I can't get. A, I can't get enough dirt. I never want this to end. Ever. I hadn't met Johnny Depp yet. Why would he? Meet I need you? gossip. You're a canoodle. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Product <laughs> and the three women. We are all like. We're basically arm candy, and we are sitting on. I See, that could be the name of a podcast. <laughs> I do. That was no. Listen, that was I, one was of say. the options. Also, armchair was the other one. <sighs> arm, really good. <laughs> no, or arm cast. That was. The other one. <laughs> arm candy is really good. I got to copyright that before, quite frankly, steals that too. Yes. Uh, <laughs> good one, Johnny. You got it, man. Northwest, yeah, quite frankly, stole my, that name from my thread. That's uh, I should have copyrighted it. Yeah. yeah. McDowell's. And they've already yeah, been given McDowell's. too much attention here. <laughs> so let's go. Uh, Pacific Northwest Broad Stone Age says, Fudgeckle, it's a constant moist air or lack of sun. Fact, if Sarah lives to 100, she won't have one wrinkle. That's well said, Fudgeckle. I don't know. I see them. They're on their way. <laughs> I'm on a bearskin rug in a bikini mm -hmm. and we're all like half clad, you know, half dressed yeah. and um, we're in the background and we're like smoking a joint, passing a joint. And, you know, it's the sixties. Like we're all like groovy or whatever. And, um, okay. Do you guys remember in the beginning when he first gets to California from Boston and they're going back and forth on the Winnebago and they're drug dealing back to the new England colleges Mm -hmm. And he's just getting into marijuana dealing. They go back to California. And they have a beach party. Yeah, you remember I that on the beach? And yeah, kind of I do. Around, it's very yeah. hippie-ish. So that's what she's talking about. There's a volleyball okay. net, and uh, this is the scene. If you, I think most people know that. Um, and yeah, so Tuna and Dooley are in those scenes, and they disappear later on in the movie, but Dooley especially. Tune is with him a little bit longer. And by the way, the George Young five-part documentary is fantastic that I think you could see on most of the streaming services. Uh, the real George Young who passed away, I think, was it two years ago? It's fantastic. Okay. And it, he goes into a lot of th you know, questions you might have from the movie and the book and stuff. And it's just uh, – it shows him getting out of jail. He's pushing 80 He's living in Sacramento in like a one bedroom apartment somehow. And he's got a girlfriend who's waiting for him. And it's uh, fantastic how he's trying to adjust to real life and stuff. Yeah. I'll check it out. <clears throat> Johnny Depp has this monologue that he does back and forth, back and forth. And after a couple of takes, Ted Demi comes over to me and he's like, okay, Lola, <clears throat> when he is, when Johnny Depp is like, uh, but uh, sorry, he doesn't call him Johnny Depp. No, no. Um, when Johnny, <laughs> when Johnny, yeah, is yeah Joni said it, it's possible that scene didn't actually make it in the movie too. Mm. I have to go and see where she is because that's what she's describing as the beach scene. So it's possible they didn't do enough deleted scenes. I heard that there was much more deleted scenes than they actually show on the Blu-ray. Right. Is you know saying his monologue um, when he says this certain word. You know, he gives me a cue and he says, I want you to just like burst out laughing like she just told you the funniest thing over here. We're in the background, deep background, right? And, and there's a roaring fire and I'm like splayed out in a bikini like this. And like someone's like giving me a joint and I'm supposed to laugh at, right, at this uh, scene that we're creating. Yeah. And Separate whole scene. Well, it's like they're doing, yeah, he's talking in the foreground yeah. and, and we're in the background like being the lovely babes or whatever. Yeah. So, um... Johnny Bybee is a great reference here. So anyone knows the Depp case where he had this assault charge on the set of City yeah, of Lies? Right. But the location manager, Rocky Greg, with three G's, Rocky Brooks. I don't know Rocky with the nickname. And uh, the the <laughs> irony, right, of punching a guy named Rocky on a set is uh, <laughs> so bizarre to me. And um, one of the things in the in the transcript was Depp goes, "Look, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars." fucking punch me in the face right now and how funny would it be if he said that to her <laughs> she'd probably take <laughs> it up <laughs> um, oh but i'm telling you these gindaloon broads are <laughs> he says his monologue i hear the cue and the, and i go 
<laughs> you know, and I do a big laugh or whatever. <clears throat> Carries on the scene, cut, back to one, going again. We do it again. Ted gives me the cue, like, yeah, just like that. Perfect. I hear the cue. I burst out laughing. Johnny Depp, when they say cut, walks over to me. He walks over and he goes, comes up to me, he sticks his finger in my face. And I'm in a bikini on the ground like this. And he comes over and he goes, who the fuck do you think you are? Who the fuck do you think you are? Shut the fuck up. I'm out here and I'm trying to fucking say my lines and you're fucking mm. pulling focus. You fucking idiot. Who the fuck do you think? Oh, now? Oh, now it's not so funny? Now you can shut up? Now you can fucking shut the fuck up? Oh, it's not funny now. Okay, the quiet that you are right now, that's how you fucking stay. Oof. First day. Oh my God. On the set. Oh first day, I've never met him. I've, this is my first move. Like, first. You got to remember too, she's 21 Jump Street age, meaning she was like right. kind of in high school. When that show, you know, with Sarah and the fucking Greco collage on the lockers um, and Depp and Tiger Bead and the bopper and stuff. So yeah. she probably loved him in high school. I'm guess I'm just very educated guess. No, t tw 21 Jump Street age is you're 28 playing 13. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Studio movie. I've just my stalker Channing over here. <laughs> Who oh, my agent Debbie Cicerone over here? Kristen Johnny's until then. And I have the star who I have idolized. Yeah. Who I'm so excited to work with. He just reamed you. Reamed me in my face. You must have like The only thing going through my head was don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Wow. And Ted Demi. R.I.P. Did not come over and say anything. Oh, he shit. did not say, hey, Johnny, listen, you know what? Actually, I gave her that oh. direction. And. Oh, oh, no, 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 Ted Debbie, no. Yeah. And no, he let you hang out to dry. Totally hung oh, out to dry. I thought you were going to say that. I thought you were going to say that he stood up and he said, Johnny, hey, listen, babe. No. I gave her the direction. You got to. Mm -mm. Oh, oh, that's. I'm like, I can feel like. Mm -hmm. my oh. <laughs> This is a brutal story. Could you imagine is, yeah. this happening to you on the first? I, so let me just, first of all, Philly 29, what a mensch. What a great guy. What a, and I don't mean that in a Trump way. He really is. I mean, what a mensch. <laughs> During the midst of my depression, I, I'd pop in. This is like probably four days after it happened. He invited me to go to a Trailblazers game in Chicago. This guy. Oh, wow. This is the kind of guy he is. To get me out of my funk. Wow. Oh, that's nice. I don't think watching the Blazers play, though, and this Sarah. season would help. <laughs> I don't care. Probably the worse they are, the better seats you'll get. Yeah, that's true. The worse he is. is. He, of course, uh, super chatted later on. I'm, I was waiting for you to get that. He is such a great guy. I don't think he gets nearly enough attention. Chicago, by the way, of Philadelphia. Um, Philly, if uh, one of the handful of things that put a smile on my plate. What an absolute mensch. Look at this guy. Oh, you know? wow. John. Really John nice. Look Thank at this you. guy. Go ahead, Bob. What? Go Sixers, was, I guess. If I knew it was going to make you feel better, John, I would have just invited you to, to, to Australia. Uh, uh, damn. <laughs> if that's all it took. Oh. <laughs> I had some Australia come. I, I wanted to as somebody... I forget what it was. I'll, it'll come back to me. But I had something I wanted to. I'm gonna have a. I have a crime drama recommendation after this. One of the many many things I wish Depp would have done. And, and um, yeah. I'm I was thinking that Gamma Man. She could easily be Monique's sister, right from Greenpoint. That's a great mm. line, Gamma Man. Mm. I was thinking that too. And I was. Young. I was gonna give my opinion here. I believe Texaco. I and I agree. Um, this is quite embellished this story oh, i don't know she's got now listen listen beats. listen my my reasoning for that is she goes on a little far too long with exact um lines of hatred he's spewing at right. her exact um quotes from how long ago 30 years ago if, he, if he did that would you not remember times. every syllable if that were you 
part of me would want to block it out if I was that traumatized. Uh, I would I remember he... every word. I would remember every Do I... word. Of course you would. You're weird with him. But um, <laughs> the thing is, <sighs> did he yell at her? Yeah. But I want to know what she really did. And I want to know what he really yelled about. He said, pull focus. I don't know. They'll, they'll get into it. Let me just say this about Ted Demi, my knowledge of this movie. I believe Ted Demi had his head buried in some white powder on a table somewhere, and he didn't <laughs> yeah. interject. So she says, rest in peace. The director, Ted Demi, nephew of Jonathan Demi, uh, Nepo baby, Demo <laughs> baby. Um, Hello, baby. Has a pretty damn good, he directed uh, Life, Monument Avenue, um, and uh, Beautiful Girls, which Max Perlich is in. I might add, and uh, obviously Blow. And he had a, those are all pretty damn good films. Ted Demi got the, the way Blow got made. Dennis Leary gave the book to Ted Demi and said, This is an amazing book. We got to do a movie on it. So hmm. they, of course, Dennis Leary volunteered himself to play the real George Young. When in actuality, if you think about it, Dennis Leary actually resembles the real George Young far more than Depp does, naturally. Right. He's from New England. He sort of sounds like him. He's uglier than Depp is. It, right. You know what I mean? Like, Dennis Leary actually looks way more like the real George Young. The studio would not allow Dennis Leary, who was considered toxic to lead a movie at that point, to – oh, the re by the way, The Ref is another movie Ted Demi directed – with uh, Kevin Spacey and right, um, so what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? They had an idea. Dennis Leary meets Depp at an award show and knows he can get in contact with him. And they say, "What if we can get Johnny Depp?" And then studio agreed to do the movie. So Depp, not only is he the star of the movie, he has clout beyond just being the the lead on the call sheet is the movie's not getting made if he doesn't agree to, and he knows this. So he could, Ted right. Debbie's not going to say boo to him. He could probably write his own lines. Yeah. People do not talk about this. So the movie's not getting made without Depp's signing on to it. And that's how that, and again, you heard Dr. Kipper describe his diagnosis. He's bipolar. He is up and down. You can get him. He's the sweetest guy in the world. And you can get him. He is up in his artistic head and he has explosions. We all have good and bad. And she got him at his worst. And he is I'm trying to remember. He's like, like, he's two years with Vanessa at that point. I'm also trying to do the timeline. I think he just had Lily Rose or she's pregnant with her as this movie is happening, being shot. Vanessa you, Perry. Are you are you aware of any other stories like this where, where it's this extreme? His, his, yeah, remember, did, did, were you on the show when we played? Um, I should have got it for us. I, oh, God damn Release it! Release um, their own. Yes. Oh, and astronaut's and wife. Astronaut's wife. Okay, same, I don't same remember thing. that one. Same thing. Jeez. So man. it is a pattern with him. You know, S uh, same same era too, right? These these movies are like era a year about a year apart, apart David. Yes, sir. Good catch. Yes, you weren't even. You were. Um, you just turned sixty in two thousand. I don't know yeah. that I'd call that a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> how many movies and how many co-stars? I'm just relaying it. That's the similar story. The Charlie's Throne one is eerily similar to that. I don't buy that whatsoever. You don't buy what? What she said? I didn't say it. It was a sound drop. <laughs> oh, my God. Bon, you're so good. Even I'm fooled by our I, own I thought, sound drop. I thought Sarah leaned into the mic closer. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I'll go this far, Gavin. Mean, I bet you Monique knows her somehow. These six <laughs> degrees. She stay in her apartment. Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. She <laughs> subbed in her apartment, in, you know, in like 2004 or something. I haven't told the story publicly, but um, yeah. So he, uh, we go back to one, and I have to then do the rest of the scene for like no bigs, like five, six more hours. <laughs> You know, <laughs> just like wanting to sink inside yourself. And in yeah. Fear. And I don't know anyone in a bikini in a bikini. That's the worst part. And I don't know anyone. And um, when we wrapped, you know, the costume person came over with like a warmy coat because yeah. we're like, you know, going out and stuff. And I was like a pariah. Oh, right. like no one wanted to fucking talk to me because right. like I'm the bitch who like he railed at, oh, you know, right, right. Mm hmm. 
Here's to a new and um <laughs> I wish we were sponsored by Lululemon. Honestly. <laughs> That's where the commercial thing threw me off so bad there. I think I like I reset it and I had to find my spot. That annoyed me big time last night. Yeah. When we wrapped, you know, the yeah, costume you person came back that, you know? Oh, right, right. The costume the on set costume person like gave me this this coat to cover myself with and was just like kind of like there there, little lamb, you know? And welcome to Hollywood. Yeah, and it was just like yeah, I'm, now I'm gonna walk away from you. But right, um, right. <laughs> you and <laughs> yeah, let's get away. Wow, yeah. she's got the she's got the Johnny Depp cooties right yeah. now. Yeah, and so I walked I to my trailer no, I wish and I like I just like <laughs> held my head and then like walked to my trailer and the second I walked into my trailer, I was like, oh! <laughs> you held it for five hours. Yeah, I held that's, it. That's on. crazy. Yeah, that's she's gonna be telling mm-hmm. this story at her own funeral. And then you? as I <laughs> yeah. left. Well, okay. What I'm not, what I'm skipping over is I called my dad and, um, I told him what happened. And my dad was like, you have two choices right now. He's bonded on the film. You are not, you are easily replaceable and you have two choices. You can either say, fuck this, fuck you. And I'm not going to be spoken to like that. And I'm going to walk away Yeah. or you never let him see you sweat. And you, it's to, I, Ben Benjamin, how much you want to bet? Well, what Gualdini's father called him a fruit basket on the phone call. <laughs> I guarantee it. You going to let that fucking 21 Hump Street fruit basket Hump pull you Street. around on blow? Fuck him. Who is her? Fuck do we know who her father bas- is? Huh? Do we know who her father is? No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. How would her father know about bonding on a film? <laughs> uh, she might be euphemizing for him. Who knows? Sarah, you so badly want her to be lying. It's no, sick. but she's getting all the other dialogue pitch perfect, as you would say. So that must be what he said. You broads, you broads. A little, <laughs> a little, a little uh, bestrionic. Uh, <laughs> That's what it is. You could, you could see it in her eyes, David. You can. Yep. She's in her the element. Histrionic. Right now. She definitely. I mean, every every actress has bestrionic personality disorder. Yeah. Are one hundred percent respectable. What do you want to do? Damn. And we put it to you. Yeah. Norman and I was like, K. all right, I want to stay on the movie. Because Norman K. Yeah. Because hello. And so uh, I left and I was like walking. I had to go, you know, I had to go to like hair and makeup trailer to like take out like my hair pieces and stuff like that. And I'm walking and his trailer, he had like his own little situation right there. It was right. He sees me walking and he goes, hey, Lola, can you come here for a sec? And I walk over. Now, it's kind of odd he would remember her name. Yeah. I guess. And her exactly. fantasy. I'm not saying that, you know, if you're, unless you work on him, I don't know if Johnny Myers ever worked on a movie set or a TV set or anything, but I'm sure if you're around you these people enough, <laughs> uh, you might, it's, I, just, I don't know. I, I think it's interesting. You remembered her name. That's like, it's a compliment in itself that he would remember your name. I remember when I sat in on we did I sat in on the Low and Away episode with you guys and yes. the one actor who's in that episode who's also an astronaut's wife we talked about yes like, do you think ten years later did Johnny Depp remember him from Twenty One Jump Street Jake Whitaker and yeah yep. yeah and well let's I go to twenty third and eight then we'll find out if you know what you're doing <laughs> <Lefty>. <laughs> sorry um, no 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 you're good. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. I mean, we're t- she's telling the story as it's a little bit more realistic since it's within the same movie that he might remember her name. But um, yeah, I don't know. She's not making herself look like a hero or anything. She this is what happened, you know. Like it's not like she's well, it's a sympathy story. Yeah, yeah but I mean, this is what happens on these sets when you just have no clout, um, and it would traumatize anybody if that's yeah. True. I agree. I agree. And you would remember every last syllable of him yelling at you. I know I would. It, for all we know, it could be some cameraman's got it and some dailies somewhere, right? Yeah. I, I see it from both sides. Like, I, I think I would remember everything, but I could also see me disassociating in the moment just because I it's too much to handle that coming at me. But um, You yeah, see the know. psychologist in you disassociating? <laughs> and that's a psychology word, right? I mean, this is where your other calling is that. I'm, and, uh, I'm really Jason <laughs> Seaver. Yes. 
<laughs> As Holly Robinson said about Dustin Gwen, you are comfort. You are comfort. <laughs> you are angelic comfort. And um, he's like, he's standing in the door frame of his trailer and he's like, you know, so he's looking down on, you know, there's like steps, he's up there and I'm there. And I was like, yeah. And he says, and he gave me a non-apology apology, right. you know, and he's like, you know, so earlier I was like really in my head and I was staying in character and I was really like, you know, I'm doing this Boston accent and it's really fucking with me. And so, you know, I'm just like a little tense and stuff. <laughs> my Boston accent is fucking with yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. I and, hate that. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, funny. so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we're cool and everything. And I just looked at him and I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Of course. Ooh. Oh, wow. What are you talking about? Wow. Oh, now she's totally cool. She's talking and herself up now. And so she won. Because I was just like, my dad said, never, don't let him see you sweat. And so that was that. Wow. Wow. And then we had six weeks <laughs> in Acapulco. The thing about Al the Capulco. Boston accent is like, I, I've experienced when I use my <laughs> English accent, I start to be very chivalrous and I don't, you know, and, mm. I, be, I, I, and you become a bruiser. I fall into acts of chivalry. I put my jacket on puddles. Uh huh. I, I give I night people. Uh -huh. um, the Boston accent fucking with me is awesome. It's like, listen, Lola, the Boston mm -hmm. accent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I slapped the shit out of you. My Boston, <laughs> my Boston accent got the best of me. Uh, that is a story. And also, terrifying retelling. When you were screaming at me, I was like, oh my God. Mm. It was like, and then I was like, is this what it's like when Lola gets angry? Because, oh my God. You as Johnny Depp was. <laughs> Kat, did you catch that? That was intense, right? Cat was scared, I can tell. She, everyone got quiet. I think they heard it in the other office. That was good. Hey, Lula, you realize you're pulling fucking focus away from me? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> John, um, G Canada makes a point here. He does the hashtag Heard Husbands Unite. So is Lola <laughs> friends with Amber Heard? That's well, my it's, question. Well, it's very interesting because this is coming soon. Oh, she doesn't, oh God. And I, it, 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 she doesn't say she's friends with her. It's just, it's, there's a connection though. That was worth Beautiful. the price of admission, everyone. I hope you got this far in the pod to hear that story. <laughs> that was fucking amazing. It's been quite a show. I think we're done, right? Oh. We can, we can't go no further. There's nothing more to say unless we're not done. And she's just getting warmed up. She has 20 more stories like that because that was amazing. <laughs> I mean, we're, we, uh, this is 176 episode and we've been working to get a, a, something like this. And we finally got a, a cool, true behind the scenes story with, with, with you know real fucking pathos i was watching the johnny depp amber is it pathos or pathos i would say pathos, pathos. i'd say i, always say pathos. I don't say how about <laughs> how about ethos sarah what do you say ethos e probably ethos <laughs> ethos <laughs> yeah but the question i've never is, used he's that word in my life <laughs> he said he's done 176 episodes and this is the best uh moment he thought <laughs> wow right. i think that's a that, that'd be the best story of any i think that's a great story oh, i don't know how much i love that movie hope, too i hope he would have got some bets some on but on par scoops from others in 176 shows anyway yeah i don't know like who is i have to look at his guest list but that's i don't think it gets much better than that ironically i think some people know ted demi died of a cocaine I mean, crazy, ironically, of a right. cocaine overdose in a celebrity basketball game about, <laughs> what would you say, four months after Blow came out? Yeah. Which is so Jeez. crazy to me. So crazy. He's a good filmmaker. He had a lot more in him. Apparently a very nice guy, but he's not going to – he's certainly not going to tell Depp what to do on that. Right. <clears throat> he's. I remember watching uh, – I at the time, I collected – all sorts of press from that movie and MTV Ted Demi used to work for MTV is so he used to do short films. Remember Dennis Leary used to do the smoking videos and Cindy Crawford obsession and shit. He used to yeah. do, he used to work. He had some relationship with Ed lover and Dr. Dre and he did a movie called who's the man. So Ted Demi worked for MTV and they had like this crazy promotional thing for blow when it came out because of Ted Demi. And I remember hmm. Ted Demi going, the thing I love about Johnny Depp is he can be real and legit in every scene because even the real guy, you trust just everything he says. You know, it was like, it was, yeah. they gave him like, must have been 
four hours of different promotional things. And I, I, I've since lost the VHS. It's very difficult to find, but it was MTV blow special and it was really good. And I don't know what happened to it. I don't know how I could find it now. It's impossible. Um, I've, I've, looked, I've looked on YouTube. So I know boff, get on this. I looked on YouTube like over and over again and just never shows up. Let me just, so she, she's going into this. So. I was watching the Johnny Depp Amber Heard um, trial. Yeah. Bit. Yeah. Okay. In truth, I wasn't actually watching it. I was. I saw the highlights on the news. Yeah. And this is what caught my eye or my ear. She was relaying, like I, you know, I I don't know anything about anything. Yeah. She was relaying something that he said, and when she was relaying it. Oh God! She quoted him saying, and this is what, like, I was like, huh? Because she says, and then he said to me, oh, oh, you're quiet now, huh? Oh, you don't have anything to say now. Like, she relayed something he said to her, and I was like, oh, my God. That's exactly what he said to me in that moment. It, like, fully brought me back. He must have just had been to Boston. <laughs> he, must have some, he must have some Boston, Boston baked beans. Beans, Boston baked beans or something. It happens. Okay, he kids. He has no idea. You know the plane. How right he is. <laughs> so during that exact time, he's filming Black Mass and plays oh, Whitey Bulger, mm -hmm. and that's the character's persona. Oh, that's funny. But he has no idea, and neither does she. Right. <laughs> Black, Black Mass hilarious. is the Whitey Bulger Boston picture. He has no idea. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. Oh, my God. You you need to be a consultant for every podcast that <laughs> interviews a Johnny Depp co-host or co-co-star. I, I when I was watching the, the trial, I kept thinking, God damn, I could save them. I could have saved the, the his legal team. I could have cut their job in third. Seriously, <laughs> they have to. You could have. I believe it. I would have sat right by them and just I can't believe they needed to research that stuff. <laughs> he saw a Red Sox game. Yeah, he saw a Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Well, uh, crazy story. Yeah. Intense. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. roller coaster of a podcast. Everyone, we learned a lot today. Lola uh, uh, really dug in. Told us about her upbringing. Why she's eighty six from Zara forever. <laughs> working God. with stars. First day on the job. Uh, blues. As far as that kind of thing goes, I mean, my one of my first day on the job encounters was. I had a job at Bay Cities. I, again, nothing, nothing is quite Thank as terrible as like that. sitting in your <laughs> money to melt in your skin in your bikini on a bearskin rug for five hours and holding that in is that's acting, baby. You mean really? You and you know you chose you chose the red pill. You red pilled yourself into staying on the film, mm -hmm. and you said, "Daddy, I'm gonna fucking do it." And you know that's I get it. Sometimes you know, and and that, and it's also a testament to like. So Johnny Meyer says her dad's. Bob Glardini, yeah, theater actor. Yeah, you've seen all this stuff right off Broadway, Sarah. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're immersed. <laughs> yeah, all the things that go on in Hollywood, like there's all these comedians talking about. Okay, so after she said that, I'm like, you know what? Let's see if it matches up. So I went. This is my midnight oil, um, and tried to find these Amber Heard moments that fit that. And this is kind of what I mean. I could have. It, it's so needle in a haystack but i kind of oh last God. you're gonna take me back <laughs> this horrible acting bar on three sides <laughs> him in front of me ish kind of front off to this off to the left and he's throwing these bottles one after the other and didn't happen i can feel glass breaking behind me i remember feeling um one of them go by my head really fast i mean the, a velocity a real velocity She's trying so hard to be normal. Yeah. Well, she has she has Scarlett Johansson, the accent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Velocity, like that kind of like over enunciated, you know, where you hit that. If you listen to Scarlett Johansson or any just normal speaking, it sounds exactly. She, she's she's clearly also. Trying. Go ahead, Sarah. Go ahead, no, no, you no, go. No, you no. go. Yeah, you go ahead. Oh, just a quick thing. I, I she's doing the thing where, like, as a grown up, if you were trying to imitate like a three year old pouting, and you mm -hmm. just like purse your lips down, like she's doing yeah. that Clown and face. thinks it look right, and <laughs> thinks it looks like genuinely how an adult looks when they're experiencing trauma. And I also well, want to remind everybody there was 
an actual recording where she admitted she's the one who cut his finger off. Yes. None of this happened. One of the things that killed her thing was they weren't allowed to admit um, the texting with uh, 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 Deuters. Yeah. When mm. he apologized for her and they were kind of going back and forth. That was not allowed. That was not admissible. And that's impossible not to believe. And they they th- they think she docked it. I believe if that happened. I believe they. I believe uh, you have tri- to tire the trial. Blood. I believe it was it never should have happened. And I believe the <laughs> trial. I believe he was found innocent by um, public uh, the court of public opinion before the trial. After started. they heard both sides, yes, matter. you are correct. Didn't matter. Never should have happened. Didn't do shit. Yeah. I remember I couldn't move. I couldn't go anywhere. Um, Slamming me from. Before I do, Texas Hell is slamming me from. I think she she has put her fists up like that, though, before. (laughs) Texas Hell goes, you could tell that that she's talking about Lola Glaudini. Her her career actually skyrocketed. She was going to be a huge star. She'd be a total power tripping menace on set. You could choose a career in the industry full of temperamental snakes. Yeah. But hey, she's a mentor to women. (laughs) I think Glaudini should be (laughs) happy that. Texaho didn't call her a millennial because that yeah. would be the ultimate. Yeah, set it through her grave. <laughs> the wall to the countertops. <laughs> One point, he has me up against the, the wall and he's punching the wall. He um, had my Take know, a nightgown beat. and it really vulnerable. I'm naked. Vulnerable. Oh, he's flinging me around and at some point. No tears. I'm up against the wall. I believe her too, Johnny. He's screaming at me. <laughs> and he fucking hates me. That I ruined his life. I remember the, I ruined his life o- over and over. Well, technically. And he starts punching the, the wall next to my head. I should say this too, Pellel, about Glaudini. So Depp's PR team released the thing about this afterwards. And it was not Depp himself talking about it. It was very, 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 very classic. PR fucking obfuscate bullshit. Um, yeah. Milk toast. Um, vague. He he may not even remember it, but it was not from him. It was from his PR team. And he went from punching the the wall to like realizing there was a phone there, and he picked up the phone and he's screaming. He's Rah! like. At the Rah! top of his lungs, screaming, <laughs> I fucking hate you. I fucking hate you. You ruined my fucking life. Mm-hmm. And screaming at the top of his lungs, he picks up the phone and starts bashing the phone against the wall. Against the wall where I was just being held. And he bashed I it so many times into the wall, it vanished. On, on what was happening and watching him do this. And it was like... Let me so just say this. Another about, dimension. This yeah. is how this ends. So Variety writes, and this, I think they, a lot of them picked up on it. As for comment on Glaudini's story, Representative for Depp told Variety, Johnny's always prioritized his good working relationships with cast and crew and his recounting. <laughs> his recounting of this gr- differs greatly from the recollection of, of other members does. on the set at the time. Depp's representative, remember Samuel Sarkar, pointed who was credited as a sound technician on Blow. You know what that means, right, Sarah? Earpiece. And also mm-hmm. worked with Depp on films such as Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Shock a Lot. Most recently, Sarkar produced Depp's film Minamata along with the actor. Sarkar told Variety in a statement regarding Glaudini's story, as a sound person, you're constantly listening to what's going on on set listening for noises, listening for chatter. In fact, specifically, I would listen to Johnny's audio to check for interference, both during rehearsals and during the take. I never heard anything like that. And that would have been a remarkable event if it really did happen. Claudini's representatives did not immediately respond to Variety's request for comment about the statements made by Sarkar and Depp's representative. Claudine. So You mean her? So <laughs> this are representatives. <laughs> right. It's a different voice she does on the phone pretending it's not her. Yeah. <laughs> and but that's actually a, a strange quote for Variety to include from his it side is. because Variety hates him. Oh, mm. Rolling Stone hates him more. Newsweek hates him more. Rolling Stone is they are they are absolute um I, I, you could not have done a more 180. Remember the the Thompson relationship has completely flipped. Um mm-hmm. now the Thompsons dead and uh f- starting from steven roderick and uh you know jan winner and they they hate each other depth's bass rolling stone you know this the, the magazine used to stand for something the name used to 
really stand for something. Now it's total trash. Right. It is it's true. And I was that phone all of a sudden. And he was just over and over again, smashing this phone into the wall over and over again, screaming at me. And I was watching the phone every single <sighs> time. Pulled his hand back. It was just breaking into pieces. I, I remember thinking this phone is disappearing, he's smashing it to smithereens, just going into the wall. Oh, that's why it wasn't in any photographs no phone, of the damage. Screaming, the same thing. I fucking hate you. You ruined my fucking life. Oh, he definitely said that to her. I, I believe that. I absolutely. You don't believe he screamed that at her? Mm. She may or may not have deserved it, but there's uh, no question. I cut out my audio cut out. So screaming. I hate you. You ruined my life. Screaming that she that. ruined his life. Yeah. Yeah. I don't blame him. That's why is that not believable? Every fucking you know Deptford wife doesn't she, believe anything. Was that was that after she? Was that after she cut his finger off? Uh, yeah. Okay. He can say that. Match in the gas tank. Boom, boom. On the countertop. Okay, that was a Bon Jovial countertop. <laughs> on Amazing. What that was. It had, and he felt like he was on top of me, and I'm, lo I, I'm looking at him in his eyes. And I don't see him anymore. I don't see him anymore. What is him? I've never been so scared in my life. It was, it was black. I couldn't see him. Dry face. And he was Completely dry face. Yeah, right. Looking at me, and I was trying to get through to him. I was trying to say to him in some way that it was me. I was trying to get through to John. ESB40 says that Depp work, uh, Amber Heard worked with Lola Guardini in Criminal Minds. Is that true? I Amber Heard was on I Criminal Minds. I don't know the IMDb know for either one. I, <laughs> that's really, if that's true, that's a really bizarre. And uh, I believe you. It's just crazy. I, so, I, I can't believe you knew that. Funny. I couldn't see him. I couldn't see him at all. <laughs> and. It, my head was bashing oh, that the face. back of the bar, and I couldn't mm. breathe. And I remember trying to get up, and I was slipping on the glass. My feet were slipping. My arms were slipping on the countertop. And no I, cut. I couldn't breathe. Please help. Can't breathe. I don't know. Uh... And then Elaine. I I'm so this. sorry, Amber. I don't want to do this. <laughs> Look oh. at the jury. Make sure you're getting the reaction you want. Couldn't... Wipe your forehead. <laughs> I couldn't breathe. I couldn't get through to him. I couldn't. I couldn't get up. I couldn't get up. I don't Not know one how. cut. I don't know what happened next. I don't understand. Well, you'll tell us. <laughs> it was a bottle. It was broken. <laughs> I will the, the next day I remember his, I felt this pressure. I felt this oh God. He almost gave me a bone. He said he was bruised he was punching me. What a slap in the face to actual victims. I just saw his arm. Right. I could feel his arm moving. And I, it looked like he was punching me. Talking, and it's there's music playing, and he's smoking cigarettes, and we're sitting next to each other on the couch. And I ask him about the tattoo he has on his arm. <laughs> and to me, it just looked like <laughs> um, black marks. It, like, I didn't know I didn't know what it said. It black just marks. looked like muddled, faded right. tattoo that was hard to read. And I said, what, is it, what does it say? And he um, said, it says, why no? It says, why no? And I, um, I didn't see that. I thought he was joking uh, because it didn't look like it said that at all. And I laughed. Everybody knows that story. I knew that story when I was 12. Um, right. Even I, without I being a fan. Was... So this is, this is very similar. Him. This is the Glaudini story. Um, I, I just laughed because I thought he was joking. And... Slap me across the face. And I laughed. 
and the carpet was dirty. I laughed because I was <laughs> drinking a lot of tea. I didn't yeah. know what else. So much tea. To do, I thought. A lot of tea. This must be a joke. <laughs> this, this must, must be, be a, a joke. joke. I've never I, had that. When I've been slapped, I've never on. had that response. I just right. stared at <laughs> a joke. Kind of laughing still, thinking that he was going to start laughing too to tell mm. me it was a joke. I don't know. But he didn't. <laughs> so you think it's so funny? You think it's funny, bitch? You think you're a funny bitch? And she made that up right there in the spot. You think you're a mm. funny bitch? Like, she's improvising. She went with it. It wasn't yeah. a joke anymore. And I stopped laughing, but I didn't know what else to do. You know, you, I, 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 I didn't know what to do. You, you would think you, you would have a response, but I, as a woman, had never been hit like that. Except your father. I'm an adult, <laughs> and I'm true. sitting next to the man That's I love. That's actually very true. There's not a question David Heard slapped her around like that when she was little. Yeah. And I am not happy that. about that, but she said as much. Love, and he slapped, he slapped me for no reason, it seemed like, and I missed the point. It was that stupid. Second slap, I know he's not kidding. But I don't know what else so to much say. Detail. Do, so I just, just like that story him. we had just heard. I didn't say anything. I didn't, <laughs> out. I didn't move or freak out or defend myself or in, or say, "What are you doing? You're crazy." I just stared at him because I didn't know what else to do. And he slaps me one more time, hard, hard. I lose my balance. Um, at this point, we're sitting next to each other at the, on the edge of the couch, or I was on the edge of the couch. And I'm all of a sudden realizing that the worst thing has just happened to me that could possibly happen to you. I realize that I, I wish so much he had said he was joking. Because it didn't hurt. It didn't physically hurt me. I was just You would never go into this, this much detail. This, carpet right. looking at the dirty carpet wondering how i wound up on this carpet and why i was never why i never noticed that the carpet was so filthy before and i just didn't know what else to do i didn't know what to say i didn't know how to react i just it's sat there thinking testing. how much time do i have to i figure out what i need to do because god did he just hit me no this is when the jurors turned off to her yeah yeah I stood up and I remember Johnny, um, Johnny asking me if I wanted to go. Johnny. And he did that <laughs> thing where he's like challenge, like challenging me, he said it in that way, challenging me to stand up, and get back up. And when I did, he said, oh, you really want to go now, tough guy? Shut me back down. Oh, you really you know, want to go, huh? You oh, you're so tough. I stood back up again. This time he hits. What's there? Can you pause? Thank you. Um, let's put this into context. She had just clocked him, as they say, in the face. I might have the same reaction. Oh, you want to go? You, yeah. You're tough, girl. I'm. I wouldn't blame him. I'm not saying he hit her. I don't know. But you saw if, him slap Ann H and Donnie Brasco, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That that means yeah. he did it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> if she's wailing on him, like many accounts. A couple witnesses have also said, and there's recordings of. You know, I don't, bl I don't blame him for even being hateful and being verbally abusive at, at, at that moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's catch twenty two if you're a guy. If you hit her back, I know, you're a I know. A girl, and you have to sit there. You do that thing where you kind of hunch over and you take it. I've been punched by many abroad, and um, you <laughs> really? do that thing where you kind of like slough it off and you hunch over and you either laugh and you shrug it off and it doesn't really affect you at all. But at some point, you have a breaking point, and uh, I have headbutted women. I have suplexed <laughs> women. No, you have I not. Have <laughs> Stop. No. I don't believe you. Uh, <laughs> so I relate. I, I definitely relate. Um, it's so king here, right? It's Len Bias. The craziest thing is the show that I'm about to snowfall had a Len Bias storyline in its last, I swear to you, who died in 1986. The show Snowfall spans 1983 through 1988. And the war on drugs in Los Angeles was spearheaded by the death of Len Bias in the 86 draft and they do that on the on snowfall as a storyline hmm. and they actually reenact the len bias maryland um 
uh, dorm, dormitory on the University of Maryland. Is that College worth Park. watching, John? What do you oh, give that God, out yes. of? Oh, God, yes. Out of... I just have to give you okay. advice when you watch it. Fast forward through well, – maybe I'll get to it. I'm, I'm going to play a clip from it later. Uh, uh, we're in the face. I stand back up and look him right in the eyes. And it was just a really still moment. Hunter S. Walken, as per David Pell is Depp's accent. <laughs> takes Christopher Walken and combines it with Thompson. Hunter S. Walken. I'll never forget it. Really still. I stood up and he said, you want to go again, tough guy? And I just looked right at him. Just looked right at his face. And he balled up his fists, leaned back, and headbutted me square in the nose. Just notice how when she's reenacting it, she's the one head right as I stood in front of him. Yeah, she's, uh, um, she's not I reacting to a headbutt. A foot from him. Right. Um, I went down to the floor. I remember being on top of me, and he's screaming and swinging at me while I was on the floor. Uh, he had me by the hair and dragged me the rest of the way. Now, lest us forget, now, it's very easy to pile on Amber Heard and hate on her and everyone hates Mary. her guts. And let's just, let's just, facts are facts, okay? He cheated on Vanessa and pursued oh, her. You really haven't now, let's, changed let's, As much as we let, now, I just want to, right? So before, <laughs> before we make him out, he's this 100% martyr. He cheated on Vanessa, pursued her on the Rum Diary, okay? How, you think he would regret that? Well, how do you not, you don't have some kind of um, check on her character through that? He, you believe you couldn't see through it at some point? You let that go on for how long? And that's whose fault? That's whose fault? You know, I'm mad I don't, when I'm mad I, or drink when I drink. I don't, I don't drink not to be mad. <laughs> that's from uh, <laughs> Jump Street. <laughs> so before, as toxic and as shitty as she can be, he pursued her. This is a guy in a midlife crisis, pussy fog. And he pursued her. So let's not exonerate him from all culpability. Okay? He okay. opened the door, but didn't deserve what happened when she walked through. And I know, you know he regrets every second of that. Good well, then you should see through it faster if you're so prescient. I, I, I agree with what you're saying, absolutely. But don't make people think you believe he deserved it because he let her in. Maybe, maybe you do deserve, deserve a little for no, getting no, so no, no, for no. cheating on your spouse, a mother of your we kids. We agree to disagree. Maybe there's some of it you do deserve. Maybe it is a lesson he had to learn. It, it, we, what is so noble about that initially? It's a classic at all. cliche casting couch pussy fog story. Mm -hmm. There's nothing noble about it. No, there's not. Well, and, I agree with you there, but that doesn't mean what happened should have happened. I don't, I'm not. Look, go ahead. I'm sorry. Who's and, about to? Uh, so I was just gonna say I, I I think we've talked about before. Like he also, to some extent, probably wanted like the Hellcat that she was. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, definitely. He loved the little minx. He loved right. the minx. Yeah. But but then it just it becomes like a Glenn Close fatal attraction yes. thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, David, I don't know if you people have to deal with stuff like that, <laughs> pussy fight, but you know. <laughs> I'm sure you because can relate possibly on I was raised properly. I was raised to be in a dick fog. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Away from the office into the neighboring uh, room, the repeatedly, and I, I don't remember even feeling the pain. I just remember the sound of Johnny's voice. He got next to my ear and he was screaming over and over and over again. Each time it sounded louder and more desperate. Dublin goes, uh, another person using Depp's name to elevate themselves more like she copied as a phrasing. You know, it's funny. If Depp could do that, like where like we would have to pay him like residual, you know, like some kind of fee for it is amazing. As Dublin 30 says here, how many people in general have monetized this trial and this especially this trial all the dumb 
poser fucking grifters that went right. on to this from umbrella yeah. guy to whoever oh, okay. else Don't name them. fake fans who pretended to be fans of his to try to grift and grift and grift emily <laughs> Baker, go f yourself no um, i don't agree I love and him. they all right to use his name and the only one that deserves to is me is us yes right. even, even, I even an elder half brother i fuck i'm sorry debbie go ahead I said uh, even an elder half brother uh, was able to launch a private eye book series uh, based on his name. And he admits it. I just mm -hmm. read an interview with Danny Depp like last week. And um, I don't know how I found it. I, just, I don't know why I where I, I can't remember it, where it was. Uh, it's the fog that I'm in medication wise. Mm -hmm. But he said Danny Depp said I said to Johnny, he's like, look, I'm not going to I'm not going to use your name and fame and, and Depp like harassed his brother he goes oh man you gotta use your writing skills i don't give a fuck just use whatever you want use my so it is confirmed david what you said david saying yeah. that danny depp wrote these like hollywood novels and we believe or david has read them cover to cover that so much of it is largely based on depp's actual life I, I I bet that Alka Seltzer paid handsomely to be in her water bottle right now, just because that's on it. By the way, how many times do you think he saw that expression on her face when he took his own boots off? <laughs> yes. I so <laughs> hate you. I fucking hate you. Fucking. Over and over. Fucking hate you. And then pounding the back of my head. Pounding it. With his fist, and I. Dev looks like he's trying not to laugh. Yeah. Feeling yeah. pain, I just could hear. That's such a great look by him. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't agree with talking about you... proud Eve Barlow finally blocked me last night. I just saw something <laughs> with Eve Barlow. What the hell was it? For for daring to write LOL in her IG. Con you know how quick she is, Ben four one eight zero. With you know how fast. A trigger Eve Barlow must have with blocking someone. You know, yeah. her hands probably like on the mouse pad, like immediately going boom, boom, block, block, block. More blocks than the uh, the Kemi Matumbo in 1994. <laughs> yes. What do you say we do the football game and then we wrap it up? Uh, sure. I was gonna just bring up uh, Snowfall really quickly. My, I just finished the series. Snowfall is a series. Um, how do I put this? It's basically like it's it's an FX series. FX has done some amazing stuff from the Americans to Shield to um it's basically like if you took straight out of Compton meets Boys in the Hood meets Blow meets what's the uh the wire and it's all the best elements of those showbiz entities rolled into one six seasons series and there's not a lot of actors that you'll know from this series and it's something i wish a series that i wish adept would do the lead white guy who plays a cia agent is an actor that i had never seen before and he doesn't deserve the screen time he doesn't deserve to lead he's fine he's just a he does his but he doesn't deserve to be the cia he doesn't deserve, he's not interesting enough to be on screen like this and so they should have recast him and he should have been like some guy in the background. He doesn't deserve, he's not interesting enough to watch. His scenes can be very arduous. And I recommend, especially in season one, to fast forward through all of his scenes. That mm. is an efficient way to use your time. They mean nothing, they go nowhere. He's a double agent, CIA agent who has waged the war on drugs in his own way and he's trying to facilitate. But I'll let you watch it yourself. The South Central Los Angeles stories are far more interesting than that subplot and that world and that life in the early in 1983 to 1988 uh franklin mm -hmm. saint is the character's lead's name and there's an act really good young actor named damson idris and you heard it here first i think this guy is so charismatic and good on screen i <clears throat> believe you heard it here first he is going to be cast as the renaissance and the rebirth of black panther hmm not a lot of people can fill Chadwick Boseman's shoes and they can't figure it out. I going to go on record here and they're going to say eventually Marvel is going to announce he is going to be the new Black Panther. They're going to do some rebirth renaissance storyline. And I swear to God, I bet you that's in the works as we speak. His name hmm, is Damson Idris and apparently he's British and you can't okay. fucking tell by watching this show. 
Okay. It's impossible to tell. It's so cool. good. Um, and so with that, and I immediately recognize this, there's another really good actor, and I love this guy. I wish he played War Machine in uh, Marvel. He's such a – his name is Amin Joseph. And he's a black cat who is in City of Lies, and I believe he had many, many scenes with Johnny Meyer. And here's his experience with Johnny Depp to counter what Ms. Glaudini said. I, I dug this up. Yeah, this is a great interview right here. Yeah, here. buddy. You work with Johnny Depp. Oh, Sarah, really quick. I know. I don't know if you guys know it. Sarah's obsessed with the uh, MTV's Real World, which started the entire reality show craze. Which it's amazing. It's it sucks to me that those got people didn't get compensated for what they started right. from Vanderpump Rules to the Kardashians. There's none of that without Real World. <laughs> to Vanderpump you, Villa. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember Heather B from season one, New York? Yes, I do. She's mm -hmm. in this on the show. Oh, it's I think I knew that. Yeah, of the system sucks. In. I'm a big, big um, sway guy. I I'm part of the sway family. Cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk about man, did. Johnny, man. So he's in City of Lies, this actor, Mean Joseph, and he's also a main, main character in um, uh, Snowfall. And he plays Uncle Jerome Saint, and he's fantastic in it with Michael Cage hair. Johnny Dude is Cole. legendary. Uh, his acting style is truly unique to him. Some folks have signature, you know, vibrations they bring to characters, <laughs> right? Oh, I like how I said that. <laughs> I just told you don't... That's Heather B. Remember? Mm -hmm. oh, this wow. guy, Sway, uh, is really good. He He's famous for having a very confrontational um, Kanye West interview where he pushed oh, back recently? on him when nobody... And this was like five years ago, maybe. Oh, okay. Like Kanye okay. West is used to getting his way and just being a total fucking, you know, wack -a wackadoo, shtickmeister. Um, yeah. And he wasn't having it. And Sway pushed back. It's a very famous interview with those two. Oh, check that out. Yeah, it was good. All right, when people give their own self props, and then he gonna go do this shit anyway. I mean, talk to your man, B. I like it. I had to give myself props for that. I feel like I feel like Johnny is my maybe one of the most misunderstood, misinterpreted people. I don't think none of us truly have met him. You know, I think we meet this persona, and he has this public perception they have. What is your experience with him? Yo, he was smooth. I mean, I know what you mean by like a, a persona, but look at this guy. Is that he? Is he not War Machine? Don Cheadle's yeah. not War Machine. If you know the comics, James Rhodes, Iron Man, Security, and Right Hand Man. That mm -hmm. that's what he looks like. He's not Don Cheadle. This is what James Rhodes looks like and sounds okay. like. Interesting. I love this guy. He reminds me of Rich Downs, a uh, referee I worked with. Hmm. Really good guy who saved my ass a few times. <laughs> That's great. He really, he literally saved my ass. I don't know. I took him at face value. Okay. And to me, he was a humble, gracious bro. You know, he was very giving in, in our scenes that we worked together. And I feel like it's just dope to meet people that aren't an asshole. Mm -hmm. People that <laughs> <Hard>. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's really cool to meet people that seem that they are un affected unbothered by their talent and they just know that that's a gift in which you know they connect to the world but they're not using it as a weapon weaponizing it to create space mm -hmm. around them you know that that's not really what they aura about and to me he feels like that he feels like get the you know get all the fluff away and this is who i am but i do what i do very well and i'm really focused on that so mm -hmm. you know you might get burnt with the laser if you in the path of that but other than that yeah let's, let's work let's let's you know let's go create let's collaborate i love it man hey man joseph man give this guy a big round of applause yeah. for all yeah so that's the other side right i mean that that counters lola glaudini's that's the opposite account of what Depp could be like on set um but also the line of you'll you'll get burned if you're in the path of the laser. I like, love that one. Uh, she was laughing, uh, yes. <laughs> laughing in the path of his laser. <laughs> Is it and people Amber's just say, "Well, he was a man and she was a woman." Yeah, yeah Rick uh, Amber was a um, exotic dancer, a stripper.
and mm-hmm. that's what they do. They're very good at manip- using the power of the feminine wiles and the power of the puss. And she uh, bring women home. Very good. Absolutely. She was in Magic Mike and wasn't a co- – it's, no, it's funny because she wasn't a stripper in Magic of. Mike. She actually wasn't a stripper, which is bizarre. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. The irony of supposedly Hollywood actresses pull off a truly worst of amateur dramatics type performance in the courtroom should ever be celebrated. Yes, Ben. Yes. You're going to see it in the Alec Baldwin trial when we stream it here. Hopefully you join us one and all are welcome as I can rotate you in and out. It's going to be fun with that huge panel. Unlike Emily Baker, Sarah, who is one person and the ego is so massive and that she just she doesn't need a panel. She's so overrated. (laughs) I can't even process it. Um, What's he I, don't over- I don't love her that much, but you just should. again, don't promise ten people they're going to be on for a trial well, when it's. Well, I know what I'm screen. doing now. When I there was a, it was like no, a boot camp. You don't, was, hold on, hold on. You don't have control over how many how to overload Streamyard. It's going to do it if you have too many people on and you're doing a live stream. You're fucking intimidating, Barbara Gordon. I feel like I'm Dick Grayson getting yelled at by Oracle that I've infiltrated mm-hmm. like the wrong like black mask hideout at the Gotham docks or something. You jump to home plate and you forget about second <laughs> and third base. Um, so here's a little clip of Snowfall. And see if you remember, see if you can recognize the gentleman in this movie. So this is season six, the last season of Snowfall. Well, I got two scenes for you. Okay. I want, David's <laughs> going to love this first one. See if you can, hey. I, want you to look, I want you to look at the top left. Okay. This is crazy. This is all your fucking fault. How is this my fucking fault? I only quit because you went behind my back and did that fucking deal. And he only... I believe he's going to be the next Black Panther. Yeah. Robbed me because I quit. You... Top left. Top left. Oh. Um, looking. Eastern Columbia building. building. Yes. So oh, everyone, okay. if you're not familiar with this, Johnny Depp's <laughs> former either. penthouse home is featured i'm I, I feel like they shot this i mean tell every, where is this this Jesus is downtown saved. los angeles um okay. i when you said look at the top left i only saw the jesus save sign i was like what are you trying to tell me that's great oh my god yes um, I mean, I'm, I'm homophobic uh, <laughs> right you need to be saved <laughs> christian right right exactly right um this, yeah this is downtown la um you know, it's it's kind of a it's a it's not a great part of town, um, and I pro I'm wondering if I've been on that uh, parking garage rooftop before. It does. Is that look a Scientology a little Center? No, no. It's, okay. Are you talking about they the Jesus care. Save sign? Yes. I don't know. They don't care about Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Zenu and L. Ron Hubbard. Sarah's Zenu. a Scientology expert, by the way. Um, <laughs> So go ahead. So the Eastern Columbia building, of course, is where Depp and the whole penthouse up and Amber right. Heard and Isaac Baruch. And you all know that from and that's it's crazy. It's in frame. This has got to be three o'clock in the morning when they shot this. Oh, yeah. It's the top left where they are. If, however you want to, Franklin. This ain't my problem. Ain't fucking problem. This woman's excellent on the show, too. Angela Lewis yeah. should have got an Emmy for it. They all should have. They gonna shoot me? If it meant me getting my fucking money back, I would kill you ten times over. She's his aunt. Over. On. Now you are gonna make that call. Drop the piece to it now. Look at that Eastern Columbia building. Yeah. So needless uh, to say, when I saw the scene, I watched it like a hundred times because of it. <laughs> I'm like, rewind. I'm like, I gotta remember. This is like a few weeks ago. And like, if I ever get my shit together and get, I gotta show you. It's so bizarre. And, and th- they're out of there by then, though. I think. Two two things. One, this this uh, parking garage will be on my next Dep tour. Um, I'm oh, sure. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Can I just <laughs> can I just interject? And I, I yes. watched uh, your December your drive yeah. uh, through episode and, and well done, man. That was really, oh, really you. cool. Yes. I really appreciate effort like that. You are, you are an absolute uh, mensch, dude. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it was a ton of fun. I, I love, 
in that scene that we just watched, like if you look out at the top left, you look at the uh, Eastern Columbia building, you see like a cell phone being thrown out of the <laughs> top of the building. <laughs> Could you imagine seeing that from the street? Oh my god! <laughs> and they bought the guy like chicken taco. He, what a bizarre request he had at the end. Yeah, it was almost like an Eric the Midget's uh, Amazon wish list. <laughs> totally. Yes. <laughs> Tons oh, of Dr. Crazy. Pepper. <laughs> so we got a little uh, guest appearance here from you 21 Jump Street devotees. We keep circling back to that. And uh, here we go. I got an idea. This hit me last night. What they should have done because this is 1988. Yeah. Bond, you're going to get that. You're both going to get this. You're going to know. Although it's been a while, even though he does work a lot. Ah, oh, Franklin, this is David. Ah, oh. may I come? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Is that Billy D. Williams. Thank you. Very nice to see you, Franklin. Uh huh. Yeah. Listen, I'm sorry to just show up like this, but I. Ladies and gentlemen, stop by your office, Captain Adam Fuller. <laughs> At least he's still getting close. work. That's good. He, wow. He's got a, he's got 180 roles, I think, under his well, belt. Very... Good for him. Wow. He's 75 years young here. In the area. Wow. Okay. Is, uh, something I can help you. The with. justice is his IMDb is a hundred times longer than Amber Heard's. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> good. Good. And it'll always be. Some people would rather have his career over like a big movie star because. You know, he's dropping in and out of the... He's actually led... Show, he was on the Bernie Mac show. He had a show on Showtime yeah. called um, Lynx, where it's like the Black Cheers opposite Pam Greer. So he's oh, been the lead on stuff. You know, he's got really, really under... He actually is... Uh, Holly Robinson got a duck on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and he's at the ceremony, and he's screaming at her, heckling her from the crowd. <laughs> and you can, I think I played it on the show, right? I don't remember that. We'll have I, to... I, I remember it. Early, very early okay. on. Oh, okay. I was probably before I was on. So that's Captain Adam Fuller. My, on my favorite like um, year ago. My favorite Captain Fuller moment of the ones I've seen so far is back to that low and away episode where he answers the phone and is like, hello, Phillips, it's for you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Phone yeah. acting is oh. the best. <laughs> 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 Phillips, it's for you. <laughs> no running in the hallway, Phillips. Uh, Joni uh, says Lola Glaudini and Amber Heard are criminal minds in 2006 in the same episode. Wow. That is cr I'm going to have that for next time. A Amber plays a character much like herself. I, I, we were talking about when Amber Heard would ever do a character descriptions, it would always be she would just go, she's really beautiful. She, re she would talk about the character <laughs> she's playing, but she's basically bragging about herself. She'd go, right. she's really strong. She's really smart. Mm. She's really beautiful. And she's really tortured. And she's really dedicated to her family. And just giving like these basic bitch compliments like to herself. Right. Like about. <laughs> good herself. question. A good question is what did we all think of Amber before all the trouble? Did anybody have any issues? I wasn't even really aware they... of her. I didn't know her until yeah. uh, uh, Rum Neither died. Did I. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. her until. I knew he married some young girl, and I was disgusted. So I stopped caring about all about her. I, I thought she was a Scarlett Johansson doppelganger right from Jump Street. I mean, I really immediately I said, "Oh, it seems like this could have been." And I remember saying that, and I didn't realize I was right until later. Scarlett Johansson actually didn't get that role because she was too expensive. They couldn't oh. afford her for Rum Diary. Interesting. Okay. Um, which I'm sure that the, the, you go, know, oh, she would probably say she turned it down, but the story is she couldn't, they couldn't afford her. And I could see yeah. that movie. The movie is a great, a much bigger budget than I thought. I mean, that's, it's a, if you don't know, the Rum Diary is basically, Sarah, you watched the Rum Diary actually, right? Mm hmm. Hated it every, every oh second. My God. So if you oh. take all the things that make Hunter S. Thompson interesting and strip it down, to the most boring side of him. I don't know what that saw on that as a motion <clears throat> picture. It is no business did, going to stream. Did Infinitum Nile produce the movie? Yes. Oh, it did. Okay. So by the time 
after Pirates, the success of Pirates, he started to get the producer stuff. So he produced that, and he's responsible for the casting and and right. stuff. And it's not that it's not he's not decent, but it's not the movie to do is Hell's Angels. Hmm. If you're gonna do a Thompson book, the movie to do is Hell's Angels, not that. Right. And that's where I should be. I should be taking over Infinite Nile. Right. I just don't. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, just don't, I don't even think I, I don't think I'm saying anything profound. I think it's a no brainer. Right. Hell's Angels. What, you're undercover. Again, he could do the undercover thing. The premise of that book is Hunter S. Thompson went undercover with the Hell's Angels and for a year to see what goes on. To write yeah, that would be fascinating. I think Sarah Bon Jovi and I should make a uh a demo like a logo uh, video for Infinite of Nile just to get in the door, and then oh, we can so start funny. making these decisions. Do it, yes. Great. <laughs> I'll do whatever. I'll I'll do whatever. Yeah. I'm I'm open. I mean, is all. the is the company still in existence? Infinite it's of Nile. Still, you see, this is where I get annoyed at his choices because <laughs> the point of having a production company is that you could write your own ticket and do your own films. So, what's the point? in doing somebody else's stuff, you have no business doing a bad movie if you have your own production company. Right. Who, who cares? Why right. have a production company <laughs> if you can't creatively do whatever you want from the ground up? Why bother? Right. I mean, because it starts to look like a front for another secret business, yeah. like money yes. laundering, you know. Um, And Sarah, maybe you could use um that photogenic talk about charisma that cartoon cat of yours you had <laughs> at the beginning of this oh my god jesus sarah i, I want to know what you're going to do when, if you ever met her you're it so would, obsessed with a cat it would be like meeting Depp in a way like you just <laughs> wouldn't know how to jesus do. she's very That's intimidating. A big call. she's very intimidating <laughs> randy marsh welcome sir lizzie cats welcome uh Okay, so football. this is what? I want to watch some football. Okay, it's right after this. <laughs> oh my God. Sarah, you said Kathy Lee Gifford's music is the only thing that could calm down your cartoon cat. <laughs> that was her singing it, yes. Okay, let's what a cute little, what a little cartoon character that cat That's is. Super she's, cute. She's, she has the sickness right now. <laughs> she's sick? Yes. What, she come back from space in that cat astronaut outfit? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> she's, on a lax, she's on a laxative for hairballs. Oh, poor baby. Um, so, John. Th yes. John, Grace wants to say something to you. Hey, oh, no. I missed you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus if I haven't heard watches, that voice in 10 years. <laughs> uh, I love MSN, it. MSNBC, how much she sounds like Nicole Wallace, who oh, does yeah. the, uh, the four <laughs> o'clock slot, four to six. Uh, I wouldn't know. Yes, you would know. Yes, no. you would know. So I mean, I, you should I, know. You should. I'm not brainwashed like our host. <laughs> this is what I'm going to be. Um, <laughs> this is what I'm going to be. Look at look at Katie Aldana with a Meredith Baxter Bernie reference. Katie's <laughs> <laughs> made for TV movies. Yeah, I miss those TV movies, especially her and mm -hmm. Angelian, the greatest TV movies of the eighties. <laughs> Is that redundant? A cheesy TV movie? When you say that, can I tell you? I had my first one of my first nightmares as a child. I saw the commercial for the Angelian True Story TV movie. There's a a, a scene where she's in the shower after. Um, she had a, I'm going to say this wrong, mastectomy? By second. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I had a nightmare about that, and it haunted me for months. I don't know why I was young, but I will always remember that TV movie because of that nightmare. Right. And that commercial. And who cares? Let's move on. You're obsessed with TV. Hey, Rodney. <laughs> the, welcome, Rodney. I'm glad you finally yeah. got on the point of Aquaman and the Lost King. It actually made the most money of any DC movie in the last since it self in 2018 aquaman lost kingdom aquaman 2 has made the most dc money in the last seven years interesting and it is the aquaman franchise is the most successful dc property 
making him the number one hero in DC Comics and ruler of three-fourths of the world, the oceans. Thank you, Rodney. Uh, I do hope Lobo comes out. I'm a big Lobo fan as well. Not as big as Aquaman, but yeah, Momo was sort of like playing himself when you play Lobo. Lobo is a, um, for anyone that doesn't know, is a DC Comics kind of like inter intergalactic bounty hunter who has hmm. super strength and invulnerability and rides around on a space sky sled with like a sickle and chain and he's <laughs> a wisecracking thing and he's a good character. Does he, does he look like Roman Reigns? Yeah. <laughs> A little bit. I'll give you that. Um, so I've been looking for this for um, no hyperbole. Sarah, you'll sign off on this, right? For I don't since know. this aired for 14 years, I've been looking for this clip. Uh, I have. Oh yes, yes, That's yes. That's a long time. 14 years. 14 years I've been looking for this. Uh, I have. I am an NFL, an NBA, and Major League Base and wrestling hoarder of old school games in full, and I reach out to people to find them. I save them on hard drives. I have as much as you could possibly have. And <clears> in my NFL things that I find, I couldn't believe I couldn't find this game. So Johnny Depp in 2008 goes to Arizona and attends the Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, his precious Miramar Miami Dolphins, Arizona Cardinal game. In week two, I believe, of the 2008 season 2008 2009 and i'd only seen a picture of it a glimpse and i'd heard about it and apparently like i see star oh johnny depp was shown the, the game every year i'm combing asking people on youtube it's this obscure game that maybe nobody watched very seldom very few markets got it year after year goes by and i'm just like asking people where is it where why don't this this, this guy's a dolphin channel on on youtube and it just years would go by and I, games around it would have week four i would see in 2008 couldn't find it finally two months ago dolphins cardinals 2008 hd i download the fucker i watched the whole thing <laughs> and here yep. it is and go, in this Johnny. frame you'll see none other than jack depp Oh, and wow. with like dirty blonde hair, and uh, CBS telecast. <laughs> Steve Berline is the uh, Steve Berline was a quarterback for the uh, Cowboys and Cardinals. That's why he's doing a Cardinal game here. And this is Johnny Depp at a Dolphin Cardinal game, and they spot him in the booth in the uh, celebrity booth. Hold on a second, let me get the. How long is this? By the way, I'm just afraid of the NFL it's like a, coming for a me. Minute. Like Sarah, you, you're going to want to get ready the um, Armageddon drop after this because this is – John has just hyped this up. He's been looking for this for 14 years. 14 years. Everyone, <laughs> everyone <laughs> listening. So this is going to be huge. I, I agree. I hope we are still streaming for everyone to see it. No, the full game was on YouTube, Sarah. I think we're fine. So here we go. Bill McAtee and Steve oh. Berline were in Arizona for week two of the NFL on CBS with the Miami Dolphins and the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals there. I let it run a little long because I want to give context to the time it is. And I wanted to show you the starting lineups for each team and kind of what the, if this brings back memories for any NFL junk. Home opener trying to start 2-0 and oh for the first time since 1991. And this game is brought to you in high definition. Who lives in Arizona before they were friends? Doug Stanhope, Brisbane. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're not, they're not friends yet, though. This would have been great if Stanhope was there. Here on CBS, Arizona won the toss and deferred, so they'll kick off and take another sellout crowd here in Arizona. Welcome to the jungle. For all you Depp fans know that Guns N' Roses got offered the contract when Depp left his band, the kids, he joined another band called Rock City Angels. And they were the part of this sort of L.A. rock scene in the mid to late 80s. And they were. I think we got a copyright not to interrupt you. G. Canada what? says the feed's down. No. Uh-oh. He could be. I think he's calling you. I'll check. No I'm checking. I'm checking. No way. They wouldn't um, cut it. How would I'll you know that? It's, but you barely watched any. 
no, I think he's we're kidding. still live. All right, continue. He's yeah. fucking yeah. with you. No, that's a good one, G. That's a good one, G. He's fucking Cannon. with you. He's so yeah. happy. Watch. Wait for it. He's going to start laughing his ass off now. He's fucking with you. Continue, John. What was I talking about? He threw me off completely. I had a comment about Guns and Roses, LA, okay, yeah, LA right. band. Guns, they're playing in the background, Guns and Roses. So the story goes the Rock City Angels moved to Tennessee, to Memphis. David Geffen, the executive, passed on them and gave their record contract to Guns N' Roses, the band that was wow. in Rock City Angels. And they're playing in the background here as he's on. So on a 23 straight sellouts for the Cardinals going back to the opening of this facility in 2006. This is the 10th time these two... Props to, I must say this, Maurice Shipley, NFL channel. He used to do nothing but Florida teams, and now he's kind of he's posting full NFL games at HD, and it's phenomenal. Wow. Phenomenal. You see his initials there in the bottom left, MJS. Yeah, yeah. Maurice Shipley the third. Um, if you're an NFL fan, this guy has everything. Team. 1981 Packers uh, Lions. To played Arizona has won just once in their nine previous meetings. This is one of those early season games that can set the tone for the rest of the season for both teams. And the kick goes out of bounds. Bill Racker shaking his head right there, walking off the field, Bill. Not the way that Coach Wise and Coach Wisenhunt in the Arizona. Okay, if there's any New Yorkers here, Chad Pennington is a quarterback for the Dolphins, and he had a very sh a little stint with the Jets. And for a while, he was considered like their best quarterback for a while. And he just sort of like had a little, and now he's, he's a dolphin here. But if any of those Jet fans, he's uh, from New York. He was a Jet for a while. He's a, he's a Dolphins quarterback here. Cardinals wanted to start this game. Chad Pennington, the 13th different starting quarterback for the Dolphins since 2000. Wow. Had a chance for a storybook finish last week, but fell just short. The offensive line. Jake Long, the first overall pick in the draft, making his second NFL start at left tackle. Williams and Brown will split the load at running back. First and 10 for Miami at the 40-yard line. Ricky Williams is alone in the backfield. Short drop for Pennington. Quick completion to Great Camarillo. And a nice pickup on first down. For Miami, the car 41 yard punt and a 16 yard return. Kurt Warner. Now you gotta, I gotta go through this three hour game to find this. <laughs> to find this. Yeah, this is the full game. Do you guys know Kurt Warner? He has a great story. He has a movie about him too, played by Shazam, Zach Levy. He's, uh, yeah, he's the quarterback for the Cardinals here. He's a. Uh, I don't, I don't like him. He was working as a supermarket assistant manager. Wow. And then he tried out, and then he... The two-time league MVP beat out Matt Leiner for the starting job at the end of the preseason. They have so much confidence in what he brings to the table. For the first time in a while, there's continuity on that Arizona offensive line. Four starters back from last year. And, of course, they have some weapons on offense. One of the best receiving duos in the league in Bolden. You know Larry Fitzgerald, right? He's on the... Ed Edric and James. And Fitzgerald... Edrin James coming off a 100-yard game last. Here comes Depp. Last week, and we'll see Tim Hightower. The How about that? Captain Jack Sparrow is in the house. Johnny Depp in attendance today here in Arizona. <laughs> Look at Jack. <laughs> Look at little Jack on the right. Oh, that bowl cut on uh, Jack Depp. <laughs> yeah. Jack was born, I think, in 2004, 2003. He so hasn't yet of... learned how to tell snap. <laughs> <laughs> very nice sarah very nice indeed God, looks good so, so do you so that do arm you. i want to grab it not you right. what <laughs> Baby one bit there? of sinew you can't see on it <laughs> that's a 10 yeah <laughs> yeah this is that that steps like trade trademark look right there i mean like you shouldn't ever deviate from that <laughs> <laughs> oh my All God. right, that's enough. I, 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 I love the... That's enough, Jackie. Well, Wednesdays on Showtime. Join... 
They gave him the box. Isn't it, what a bizarre game. What an obscure mm. game for anyone to go to. I cannot tell you guys, if you're not NFL fans, how like wacky this matchup is. These are two teams in two different conferences who never play. Complete opposite sides of the country. You could go years without these mm. two teams seeing each other. And they're not nationally. It's so bizarre. Tim Hightower, the rookie. How about that? Captain Jack Sparrow is in the house. Johnny Depp in attendance today here in Arizona. Well, Wednesdays on Showtime, join JB, Phil Sims, Warren Sapp, and Chris Collinsworth. Now, it may not seem like much to you, but I was looking for that for 14 years. I think that's a <laughs> that's great amazing. underrated moment in Depp. I believe Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, you're welcome. No. I have I've a question. Just I learn something about sports every time I do this podcast. Um, how you mentioned the the player who was like working at a supermarket like how political is it to try out for a team and actually get hired by like a big team do you have to is is it a lot of knowing the right people but obviously you have to do the job yeah like i mean skills. obviously sports is merit based and that's right. like the best thing about it but yeah you could have you know you know a scout or an agent or an assistant coach or something to just gets the ear of someone that says, look, I think they miss people all the time. I mean, sports right. is the closest thing to merit base where you deserve the job. You Absolutely. know, you can't fake it and stuff, but yeah, they miss people. There's people who get like Tom Brady was drafted ridiculously well. So you do Mike Piazza and that famous one. There's guys all over sports that they just miss. They get it right most of the time, but there, there are people sitting at home right now going, you know, I, 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 they missed me. They missed me. I had, right. I was, I got a friend, older friend, my sister, my brother-in-law's best friend, uh, Brad Howland, who was a, the Fordham, like all time leader in every baseball category you could imagine. He's six, four strong, fast can do it all. And because he had bad vision, he wears glasses and contact lenses. They just held that against him and they would not oh, wow. give him a shot. Okay. He, the guy, I'm telling you, they missed him. They missed it. They, they, you, I, I'm not being biased. They missed him. He no, was, I get, I get he did it. everything you could want. Great guy, great smart guy, great clubhouse. Added, everything about him reeked of, you know, fucking the next uh, Von Hayes or something. Yeah. I, I just didn't know if it was like sometimes, I mean, Again, yes, the, it, it is the most merit-based, but if there were shitty players who had some weird influence that made them overlook someone who was more qualified, um, but that that's probably more no, they, you, No, it's a great question, but yeah, they get it right 90-something percent of the time, but they miss people all the time. I'll right, give you an example, okay. and Sarah's going to be all over this. LeBron James' son, Bronny, mm. right? He's going to get chances that nobody else, right. no eighth man in college basketball would ever get Yep, because of his dad. And maybe There's somebody that's out. not going to be drafted because right. LeBroni needs to play with his dad before he's drummed out of the league permanently. Then, right. There's only two rounds, and there used to be more. So it's a very crucial spot, you know, to get drafted. And, and, and the NBA now, because players leave so early – you don't really know who's good and bad from college basketball. It's impossible to know. Right. And and would they draft his son just because they figure like, oh, it'll it'll help us sell out games more? Yes. Or, okay. Yes, interesting. It's a business, right? They know people right, are right. to see him. I mean, I, I don't know what like USC's ratings were, but nobody cares about them. College They're basketball. They're a horrible team. Them. Yeah. I'm sure every their ratings are probably crazy. And he averaged four points on a horrible team. He's going to be drafted. Makes sense. <laughs> um... So let me see here. Uh, so yeah, somebody somebody signed off on Snowfall. Uh, I was G Canada. G Canada's got great taste in uh, crime, gritty crime dramas on TV. He watches all the good ones, and that's a show I wish Depp Depp would have been phenomenal as a CIA guy because you couldn't you can't take your eyes off him because he, he he you know he dominates the screen, and that's what they needed. You can't have fucking Carter Hudson and his banal bullshit. Um, <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. You know he just doesn't deserve the screen. Thing. He just doesn't deserve it. Right. I would have recasted that. That's my, that's my problem with the show. Thank you, Benjamin. Great to hear you. I think we're going to end that here. Any yeah. uh, guys, Sarah, you want to get you to bed? Mary Jane, good to see you, Mary Jean. Uh, yeah, I usually crash around this time. 
Uh, <laughs> Johnny, by so you're afraid, Depp's afraid of voice black man who beats up younger white. Yes, that's what I'm saying, Johnny. Alec exactly. Baldwin, try it with live arm commentary. I will be there. Hopefully, anyone can join us. You're all yeah. welcome. Rotate you in and out, um, like a you know, rec yeah. ball at LA Fitness. When is Sarah <laughs> gonna let John do the Johnny and the Blacks show? Says Johnny, he Baba. just did it. I hope you it. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> that was today's episode. We snuck it up on you. Yeah. David and I are going to resume <laughs> Armfeld soon. We're on season two. Yes. Jesse? Like, which do you remember what the next one? Yeah. Is? Um, I think, I think we did the pony remark as the last one we did. So, uh, yes, I do. It's the jacket with Elaine's dad. That's the next one we're doing. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, we're going to do some hopefully gunk announcements. Thank you, Johnny. Bye bye. I. I do feel better like right now, but you can only stream for so long. And then I have to be with me after that. And that's, that's where the hard part comes into play. I'll probably take a nap right after this. A Danish John. girl and I didn't even notice her in the movie. Wow. Yeah. Go ahead, Ma. Is, um, is the Baldwin trial, is that going to be streamed live like the death yes. was? Oh, yes, yes. Because I, I watched oh, in full yes. the Hannah Gutierrez. She Wasn't was the hers? It was like two weeks, right? Yeah, it's about two weeks. Um, she's the armorer on Rust, and they felt they it was fully broadcast. Like Sarah's watching a trial, I think right now that's Zoom, and it's not the same because you get it's the horrible. echo. Oh, yeah, that's it's not annoying. as annoying. It really doesn't hold up. I've been waiting and, a year for the Chad Daybell trial, and it's three Zoom cameras. I can't see what's going on. There was a reflection over the project or the the screen that drops down to show the evidence. I can't oh, see it. You God. can't hear them. I don't like Idaho courts. Anyway, let's... welcome Holden. Well, thank you, Holden. Um, so, my, I'm kind of obsessed with cameras in the courtroom. Thing. We we obsessed with the Depp trial. Like, if you go back and listen to our old Depp and Angst, I was screaming about this for like two years. I'm going. It better be televised. It better be televised. And then finally, the announcement was made. So, what has to happen is this is how it goes. I'm sure, uh, John O'Reilly will. The judge can green light the full cameras in the courtroom. And mostly that's how it's done. So the judge says, both, yeah. Both have to agree, both sides. Right, both sides. It's also a state by state thing. So mm. ironically, and how weird is this guys? New York City, which claims to be the media capital of the world, doesn't allow cameras in their courts. Really? Because they don't they Court cases, they let you out on, you know, without paying bail. You're released the, the same day if you hit somebody on the street. Meanwhile, <laughs> the OJ trial was televised in the 90s. And New York still can't get their transparent shit together. 30 to years later. Cameras right. 30 years later. They're not it's all the Trump stuff that 91 uh, indictments Trump has. None of these things will be televised if it's in New York. Well, they're also, aren't they federal cases? But the judge can overrule the federal part. I don't think so. I think federal cases are not to be um, filmed. So in New Mexico, where Rust was shot, Hannah Gutierrez's trial was fully televised because the judge and state allow it. And so Baldwin's will be televised. I think okay. there's a 95% chance it'll be televised in the same way that Depp's did. And it doesn't look good for him. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting comparing just like two, you, you know, uh, two leading men, uh, you know, kind of from slightly overlapping eras um, where one has total charisma and the other is sort of a known douchebag. There's so many right. paparazzi videos of Alec Baldwin just like threatening the paparazzi um, and and so I think it's and the voicemail to his daughter and, and all this stuff. I mean, that's going to work against him and all this stuff, you know. And the the, the lead prosecutor, she looks she, she reminds me of uh, Kate McKinnon from Saturday Night Live in the, the New Mexico. She's leading this case again. And so I don't know if anyone watched the trial with Hannah Gutierrez. She ended the trial by going and believe me, believe me, Alec Baldwin's going to get his, too. You're wow. not. And she literally threatened him at the end of the trial to the camera. Oh my gosh. It was crazy. She's, by the way, excellent attorney. Holy shit. She's fantastic. 
I forget her name, but she was. If you get a chance to watch the Gutierrez uh, armor for Rust, uh, you know certainly the last and certainly the last week. She, this woman, she got better as the trial went on. She got like stronger, and I was like, wow, yeah. I was blown away by her closing. Her closing. Blown away by it. Melvin, welcome Melvin and Holden 190. Uh, God, we love him some Melvin. I had a nightmare that the stripper I was had cold hands and she was. Um, he's, he's making fun <laughs> of my Angelian nightmare. Oh. <laughs> and she was Camille Vasquez, who Melvin still is spent <laughs> with. Right. Arm, have you been checking out X Men 97? Uh, yeah, well, oddly, Autobot, I am working my way to, I'm, I'm re watching the entire series, so I'm kind of making my way to it. Um, I believe there was a, a preview for the next batch of episodes and Captain America's shield shows up on the bottom. So that's crazy. And I cannot wait. Uh, I thank you, Autobot, the, the Raiders as well. And so, yeah, uh, I'm all over X-Men 97 has gotten huge, huge, um, great reviews. My only, I, I'm pissed off Colossus isn't in it yet. I'm, I, I can't believe they don't have Colossus as a regular. It really bothers me. There's not enough brute strength on the team. You can't have Rogue as your strongest character. You got to have more brute strength on it. You got to, you got to, you got to fortify it a little more. <clears throat> Good move by Geffen. It probably was Autobot. We got it. Speaking of that, well, next time we're gonna we're gonna do the kids versus Pearl Jam with Bon Jovi. If they'll join us, um, and the sure. Neil Rogers show. We're gonna talk about the kids and the early '80s and those bands. Defibrillator. This Sarah's talking to herself here. <laughs> Ken O'Brien. Oh yeah, Uji in the Biden. chat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was so long ago. What are you, you you you're really sarcastic? What a wise ass! <laughs> He's gonna pull that B Arthur fucking. <laughs> I I think I've I've successfully completed my deafening bingo card. Uh, arm calling out Sarah for being sarcastic. That was the last uh -huh. I had to check. Oh, before we even come, you, before we even started, you gotta stop huffing because I was like, oh, I do. <laughs> Sariana Huffington is her nickname. <laughs> well, I am going to let you say your goodbyes. I'm going to. No, no, you're staying at the end. All right, everyone. You, you, let's go. You. Hurry up. Everyone, guys, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. I love you, Chad. Thank I you. It's so good to be back. Work on my mental health, and I'll let you know. Welcome. My status Welcome back. Day -day. We Sarah, love you, John. We love you, too. Yes, we I love do. everyone in the chat. Thank you, everyone. Um, I don't have my next appear, but I will say that we're doing the, the Patreon. We're doing the next Jump Street, and we're doing Armfeld soon. Yeah, and those will be substantial. I hope I get my shit together. Um, you are coming back slowly. You will do what you can do when you can yeah, do it. No pressure. Oh God, yeah, Jody Marilyn Manson. That's a really good case. I'll, I'll definitely stream that if they do. Um, no, but he's, read, oh, yes. read it. Read it. Federal cases. Uh, Federal cases are in camera, and Manson's was on televised for the same reason. I think the judge can overrule it. I think it's a law. I don't think you right. But anyway, full transparency. I hope he. Do you recall him there. going on a binge with Marilyn Manson for a few days? <laughs> oh, very nice. This is what Sarah's really. Yeah. This is what Sarah's really looking forward to. <laughs>